Get your shoes and socks on, kids. It's that time again. The New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Good evening. Good afternoon. No matter where you are on this planet. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah. What's up in Arizona? Yeah. What's up, Paul? It's all going down. Got a good one today. Got a good one. Another Keeler show. Yeah, this is going to be a Keeler show. Oh, yeah. What's up, Spikey? What do you say? Yeah, yeah. Arizona in the house. Rizzola in the house. UK in the house. Go ahead, London. Yeah. It's that kind of a party. Could be a good one today. Excited about this one. That's right. That's right, Stardust. Fuck yeah. Yep, yep. Good to see everybody. Yep. Hazer's gigs. Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Yes, Neutron Bomb. Got some Arizona in the house today, huh? Yep. There you go. There you go. East Bank, third world, third ward soldier. New Orleans represent today on the show, man. Concord, California in the house. Good. Hey, Rob, how are you, buddy? All right. Let's get it on. You, me, great guest today. Got a good feeling about this one today. And I hope you do too. That said, Italy in the house. Look, they're coming. Listen, they're coming out of the woodwork for hey. Hey, they're coming out of the woodwork for this guy. That's right. That's right. I, love, I always love that term. They're coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> uh, we knew this was gonna be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. That, you shot this clip, right? Yes. That was the clip, that was, right? That was at uh, Halloween. It was Halloween at Irving Plaza with uh, I Hate God and Guar. Ah. That was awesome. I, I left that show covered in blood. <laughs> yeah, I see everything. I, I see all the monitors covered in plastic. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's fucking funny. That was all awesome. Great right. show. Yeah, yeah. All right. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, <laughs> how about some photo of the day? Wrong answers only, please. Photo of the day. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wrong answers only, please. What do you got? <laughs> what do you got? Is it Kiss? Is it Travis Bickle? Good one. Kind of <laughs> close, actually. Is it Attack of the Clones? <laughs> is it the Nuge? Is it, Min is it Mini Me? Is it Mr. Corleone? Close. Close. You know what? I got to give it up for this guy. Actually, you know, the guy's got some, lately, he's got some pretty cool tattoos. Like lately. <laughs> I know. Like, you know, I don't know if I'm going out and getting tattooed at this point anymore, but this guy goes out and still gets some good shit, you know? Is it Billy Joel? Is it the agnostic bobble? <laughs> is it the Godfather Part Two? Is it is it Jocko the engine energizer guy? Hey, the guy loves dolls. There you go. Is it Danny Trejo with the Mohawk? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got. Let me see what we got. What we got. God, God. There's another one of him. All right, here we go. Yeah, this one's cool. What? Okay. Bam. There you go. <laughs> yep. Skinhead army. <laughs> You know, <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, it doesn't even look like me. You know, <laughs> yeah, he's got kind of a smirk on. Yeah, right. It kind of looks like him. Kind of looks like him. All right. What is it? Well, clearly, this is our man, Vinny Stigma. Uh, they did what they called coffee with stigma yesterday <clears throat> at Generation Records. 
and Vinny was there signing these new uh, limited edition um, bobbleheads from Agronautics. And he was, you know, there was coffee and donuts and, uh, you know, a nice turnout of our friends came out from all over the place. And there were some people that came all the way from uh, Poland, as a matter of fact. Yo, I got the shot of this guy. Hold on. Which uh, this dude. was very cool. And uh, in fact, his there he yep. is, Tomas. Yo, this and kid right here was just like in tears, bro. He came up. He was so shook up. It just so happened he was in New York with his family. He heard about this event. He's a big fan of this show. He came to the show. He was visibly shaken. He had his wife and his daughter. He was so excited. He gave me he gave me his fanzine from I think, you know, I think dude I think dude did this fanzine like 300 years ago. He gave me a copy of his fanzine and he actually gave me some photos of Agnostic Front playing in Poland. Oh, that's in like, in like 1990 Six, because in this photo here, I know you can't see it, but I, I got to scan these. But Jimmy Coletti's playing drums, so this oh, is no. going back. This is going back, you know. And 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 he, and he put all his info on there. It was really, you know, it was awesome. It yeah, was really, that was very cool. And he, um, beautiful. By the way, that fanzine's really nice, really high quality. Bro, the fucking fanzines from, of course it's nice. It's from, yeah, it's from 19, what is it? What year? That one is a, the recent one. The other one was from the late 90s. Oh, this is a recent one? That That's like in the last three or four years, I think. And my, uh, it's all, all in my Polish. It's all, all my, my to my motherfucking Polish brothers out there. Ha. Yeah, he was, it, listen, you know what, listen. Things like that, moments like that, honestly, for me, is the currency that's that's the real currency of doing this show you know seriously I, I kid you not real talk like that's when someone like that you know turns up and just is just uh thrilled uh to, to meet me and you and and vinny and like you know and yeah. his wife and his daughter and you know i mean it awesome. was amazing it was great and yeah. not to mention we had we had our friends from you know, from Larry the Hunter and Spike the Light, and you know the whole crew came out. It was it was a lot of fun. It really was. Wait, I got I got another one. You know who was there? Talk about New York hardcore OGs. Someone I got to get on the show who who was in who was in my first book is uh, Jonathan Wiley, who was yes. in Hell. He was in Hellbent. He's in Drew Carolyn's um, matinee book. Yeah, this guy was there. Jonathan Wiley was there. You know. Yeah. So that was cool. And it, uh yeah. Go on. It it really was fun. It was uh you know, I I I love they always, they're always uh, great hosts over a generation and you know, it must it must be fun for you to like to not have to moderate sometimes like, you know. It it is. <clears throat> and I was saying that on the way back uh to the train with a story Lou like it's rare that I get to go to an event like that. And I'm, I don't have to do, I don't have to do anything. I could just hang out and enjoy it. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it yesterday. I did. I, I really enjoyed it. You know? Yeah. Look at yeah. Vinny. He looks great. The guy, you know, he's timeless, that guy. Yeah. You think who's from your hometown of Long Beach? Oh, oh you think Jonathan? Jonathan's from your hometown? Because Vinny Stigma, yo. Vinny Sting has been living in the same building <laughs> in Little Italy his whole friggin' life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, Wiley. Yeah, could be. Could be. Very well, very well could be, you know? Um, and what else? Okay, here, here's a shot, you know what, while you're on the show of you and our guest. And uh, did you send these to me or did, uh, did Larry Kelly? Oh, I said uh, we might have both sent it. This was, you know, the fun thing about this, this was taken the day of that video, is that uh, I was on my way to their show, and I was just doing my segment, and Mike just happened to be walking by. Ah. Uh, and we pulled him in, and he made a little special appearance on the show that day. Yeah, it was cool. And that was great. That was, uh, you know, that was, a, that was a blast. And he's just, I've been looking forward to this, having him on again. And uh, yeah. there's Larry. 
There's Larry Kelly right there. Wait, you, and you got this yeah. one here. Here's just not not to tip our hand because we usually, but since Larry's watching, here you go. Here's Larry with uh, with today. Yeah, guest. there we go. You know, in oh, fact, Larry gave him the, Larry gave him the kill slug record that he. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I got it. Yeah, absolutely. Long live the Almighty! I hate God. Believe me, they're 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 living long. They have. Quite a career, quite a proficient career, you know. So we'll last, that. last but not least, from yesterday, here's one last shot from the Vinny Stigma Generation Records. Yeah, and, and from the Generation Records um, <laughs> uh, um, event yesterday, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. It was. It was. It was a blast. It really was. There you go. And you know what? The, the last thing I'll say before we jump off is that uh, the uh, we lost uh, Wayne Kramer this week yeah. from the MC5, one of the one of the original Godfathers of like the earliest beginnings of punk. You know. Hold on a second. We have a, we, we we have someone that's coming in and causing trouble. Uh oh, Chris Surratt, where's Mike? Where's Mike? What the fuck do you think this is, bro? <laughs> Are we not moving fast enough for you here, Chris? Sarah, Shira, should I move quicker to get him on for you? Are you? Do you have a plane to catch, perhaps? <laughs> I'm, I'm on it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Obviously, I, yo, Mike, Mike, you fucking, I hate fucking God, fucking uh, fanatics are like, are, are like bark, are, are fucking scratching at the door, man. They're hungry. All right. Let, let right. me go before before they come after me, all right? All right, I'll be right here. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Listen, dude, this dude don't know where he is. Let me tell you, bro. This ain't your father's Oldsmobile, all right? There's a format here. There's there's a certain way things, things happen a certain way here, okay? Help me help you, all right? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. All right. That said, <laughs> that said, here we go. Buckle up. Today's guest is an American vocalist, songwriter, and author hailing from High Point, North Carolina. He's known for his work with the bands Drip, Teenage Waste, Suffocation by Filth, Crawl Space. Arson Anthem, Outlaw Order, Corrections House, and, and of course, for over 35 years, fronting the sludge metal pioneers, I Hate God. Please welcome our friend and supporter, big friend and supporter of the show, coming at us from New Orleans, Louisiana, Mr. Mike Nine Williams. Brother. Hey. Oi. <laughs> You're fucking people getting crazy with me already, bro. I know that's my cult, man. I got to ask you, man. They're like, fuck Drew Stone and his New York bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> get, get Mike on the fucking show. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens when you're a cult leader. You know, you get <laughs> following. I know. That's what happens when you're a cult leader. You can have people, you can have people uh, kill each other for you, and you can and you can actually coordinate, like, Roman orgies and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's in the planning stages. Yeah. Yeah, you know why? No, not? they're good people. They're good people, actually. They're really. We consider them equals. You know, everybody's great. Hey, um, there has to there has there has to be some sort of uh, you know uh, reason, uh, many reasons, or but, but for the longevity here of I hate God. I mean, yeah, you, know, you guys have been at it a long fucking time, man. Nineteen eighty-eight. Yeah. I Incredible. mean, that's, we actually came up with the idea in like '86, so wow. uh, it's been brewing before we even <laughs> had a band. Was it was it one of the one of those things that that was brewing? Because because like when we were teenagers, you know, things didn't happen very fast. You know, right. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, like you have the idea, but you just don't have the, you know. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it was just there. We just, you know, yeah. I wasn't even the first singer either. Right. Me and Bauer came up with the idea, but then another guy, I was in another band, so they had another singer, and I it, 
way in there. So it kind of reminds me of like Harley and, and originally the Chrome Mags. Like that name was bouncing around for a couple years before sure. they finally kind of got it together, you know? Right, right. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um the uh th that's right. That that's funny. That's funny. The cult, the cult made Drew skip the sponsors. That's true. <laughs> I, I skipped the sponsors. <laughs> I was feel you know I was feel you know I was I was worried you know like that like S squeaky from is going to show up at my door now and, right. and, and like right I'm in touch with her yeah 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 you know she you know she she tried to shoot president ford man That's right that's right I mean that, that's like not not only was she like not yeah not only was she like part of the Manson cult but she tried to shoot the president of the United <laughs> States Jeez. Apparently the gun wasn't even loaded or something. It was some strange thing that I don't. She's just nuts. I mean, all you got to do is whip a gun. Out. All you got to do is whip a gun out in the general vicinity of yeah. the president of the United States. You know, You're going down. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna. That's not gonna bode well. You know. <laughs> so so let's get cracking, man. Let's um, go. How did you come up? Did you grow up in a musical household? Like, how did music come into your life? Oh man. Um, yeah, I guess, um, I guess I did. Uh, my parents were like Elvis fans, you know, and, uh, there was some, let me get in the picture here better. Yeah, there was, uh, yeah, yeah, country yeah. music, you know, uh, Southern, my cousins were all into Southern rock, you know, Leonard Skinner and <laughs> which I still love. I still love yeah, Skinner, yeah. you know, but, uh, Stuff like that, you know, and then I had two older brothers. So what was it was this in was this in North Carolina that you grew up in North Carolina? Yeah. yeah. I was in North Carolina until about 77, dating myself here, but you know, yeah. that's when I moved to New Orleans. But uh I had two older brothers. So, you know, they had tons of vinyl and I would just yeah. dig through it and find stuff. I found the Alice Cooper records and the the Beatles, of course, the Rolling sure. Stones stuff. The yeah. Who, love The Who. So yeah. I was into that stuff when I was like nine, eight or nine. Black Sabbath even. I had the, the Paranoid album. It was my brother's, but I took it for myself, you know, so. You, you know, one of the first bands I ever saw, you know, I saw the Marshall Tucker Band. It was one of the first oh, bands really? I, I ever saw. I, I saw them play Madison Square Garden in 1978. Really? You know? Wow. Can you imagine that? There was a point in this, in, in this, in this, on this planet when the Marshall Tucker band was headlining Madison Square Garden. Right. That's insane. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 yeah that stuff was big. The Southern rock was big, you know? Yeah. So, so did, did you, did you spend, uh, how long were you in, in, uh, in North Carolina? Oh, um, I mean, like I said, I left in like, uh, 77, like, uh, my, right. my dad had died in like mm -hmm. that year. So my brother became my guardian. So we, he was a big fan of new Orleans. He was a mm -hmm. hitchhiker, hippie wow. guy traveled wow. all over, took mescaline in the grand Canyon and stuff like that. You know, he was like that type of dude. He'd been in Vietnam and stuff. So he, wow. like, he wanted to go to new Orleans immediately after my dad passed. So I just went straight into it, you know, from, from North Carolina. And, wow, uh, that, wow that, that's uh that sounds like uh quite an adventure to have an older brother like that oh yeah yeah he it definitely like i said with the music you know and just he he had a very open mind you know so i think i get some of that from him you know just right. uh lots of different types of music and uh stuff like that so yeah mm. so yeah. you ended up in new orleans at, at, as a teen yeah yeah uh like 11 or 12 years old. You, so you, you, you ended is today, is today Alice Cooper's birthday. Is that right? Is it really? Oh, is that wow. right? Somebody check that. Is it Alice Cooper's birthday day? That's um, cool. Yeah, that's great. So you ended up in the cesspool known as new Orleans. Uh, well, first I was in the suburb of Mattery. I don't know if you know about that. I, I don't, I don't. It's just, it's just a suburb of new Orleans. So it was like cheaper out there. So we got an apartment out there, but then as soon as we could get into the city, we did. So I was right. We moved right into Uptown, New Orleans, <laughs> off Carrollton Avenue. You know, right, right there in the in the in the thick of it. You know, so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so back to the music thing. Uh, stuff coming across your radar screen. 
uh, older bro- other bro- older brothers record collection. Uh, I'm assuming Black Sabbath uh, really resonated early on. Oh yeah, of course it did. But that led to me finding about Kiss. Mm. So Kiss, obviously, is a lot of people have the same story. You know, they sure, got into Kiss sure. and then they got into punk rock. You know, right, 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 right. This was like that that band I could call my own. You know, they were like a band I found. I remember right. buying Destroyer, and it was like three ninety eight for v- mm. vinyl or something. You know, back then when records were cheap. But uh, so I, you know, I was heavy in the Kiss, as like everybody was around that time that was my age. And you know, you'd buy a Kiss magazine later in like the seventies, you know, seventy, late seventy seven, seventy eight. There'd be a little picture of the Sex Pistols. Or the Clash, and they're like this new thing coming out of wherever, or like some New York band, you know, television or something. And I thought, well, this looks pretty interesting. You know, this is a a little more real than Kiss. You know, I still love, and Alice Cooper still love it, but this was a little more real and a little more dangerous, I guess. You know, so I gravitated right towards it and and went headfirst into that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I know we're bouncing around, but um, as we're sort of get, getting into this, but I, I was, you know, doing my homework and I came across, uh, you know, sort of a list. They asked you like records that had like big influence on you. Right. Yeah. And this came up. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite records ever. Yeah. I, I love them. I love the dead boys. Yeah. I, 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 I do too. Now these days. Um, yeah. Why did this record particularly speak to you? I really don't know. It was just so opposite from how I grew up before I moved to New Orleans. You know, it was that New York, like gritty, sleazy, mm. you know, just everything about it appealed to me, you know, just, yeah. it was dark, you know, it was hum- had humor too, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know, just just love it, you know, just love the whole thing, you know. Yeah, they they, they before that, you know, too. Yeah, I I growing up in New York, I I knew the Dead Boys kind of peripherally, but it, it wasn't until I directed the Michael Lago film, right? You know, because he was ran fan the Dead Boys, he right? ran the he ran the Dead Boys fan club as, yeah. as, as as a teen, and we interviewed Cheetah Chrome, and you know when I did that, and then in the film we licensed Dead Boys footage. At that point, I, I did a deep dive into the Dead Boys and a uh, really deep dive. And they were, they're, they're great, man. And they're uh, great. You, you know what I, I say about that? Like, they were real punk rock. The Dead Boys were, were like a real American. I'd say um, the Dead Boys were like almost the most American, like, real. They were punk rock. Of course, yeah. I mean, yeah. they were from Cleveland, but mostly, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah. just yeah. from that industrial town of Cleveland. And then, yeah, you know, just gritty, you know? And yeah. Just, it's yeah. basically just rock and roll, but just yeah, with a yeah. weird edge yeah. to it, you know, and, and the yeah. lyrics are totally different. So it, yeah. I don't know, man, it just appealed to me. And An- Another one, another one that was in that same sort of interview I saw that, that you sort of uh, 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 cited oh. was, was the germs and, and, and yeah. so, so, you know, you know, here, here you are, Mike, like, you know, uh, uh, Stiff Baders, Darby Crash, you right. know, like, you're gravitating to all these comics. Are you comics. noticing, you noticing a, a, I'm, see, a, I'm seeing a trend here. There's a trend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that also appealed to me as well. Just the, uh, the chaoticness of all this stuff, you know, and the, uh, yeah. don't give a fuck attitude of all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. I bought this album when it came out, 1970. right? Yeah, wow. I bought it just from read. I used to read Flipside, you know, the fanzine, Flipside magazine yeah. back then. And, uh, you know, there was always an article about this band. And I saw it and I just bought it and it, it blew me away. To this day, it's just still an amazing record. The lyrics are insane. Big influence on my writing as well. Darby. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just not, not any kind of you know uh emulation or anything but just being influenced by his uh his intelligent writing you know i i think i think something could be said for that right i mean as as a a lyricist uh, as a songwriter a lot of times uh we as artists are influenced you know by by sort of like an environment 
or 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 or, or like a, a or, or 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 peripherally an attitude, right? I mean, could, yes. could you give me a take on that? Well, that's what it was. It was just like, yeah. it is no taking directly from anything, but you get all these influences. I mean, every band's been doing that since, yeah. you know, the Stones did that with the blues right. and R&B influences. It just, it kind of goes in your brain and it gets all mixed up into something and it comes out of you in a different way, you know, like yeah, your creativity comes out it's influenced by these artists, you know. I guess it's thus the term. I'm pro I'm a product of my environment, right? Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, somebody just asked. Oh, yeah. What did New Orleans provide for for influence? Well, we're, we're, so, so let's before we get there, let, yeah. let's let, let's get to like. So, what was? You, how did you get into it musically? Uh, did, did you pick up an instrument? I know you started. I know you were in your first band at 15, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, before that, I had uh, tried to learn drums. I had gotten drum lessons. <laughs> my, my brother like paid for me to get drum lessons. And I, they were trying to teach me like military band style drums. And I just couldn't do it. I, I got out of that pretty quick. Then I, I still play a little guitar. So, you know, I picked up a guitar, like a cheap guitar and learned sure. like three chords, you know, bar chords or whatever. But uh, then after that, I was like, I think the singer thing fits me a little better. It's easier. I don't even have to buy any equipment, which I didn't have money for anyway. So Right, right. So, yeah, there was uh, – I went to school, and there was some other guys there that were into punk rock, which was very few people at the time, you know. Sure. So sure. they, you know, became friends with them, and they wanted to do a band, and we started uh, Teenage Waste when I was 15. And we probably played 25 shows, maybe. Is that right? That many? Yeah, man. I mean, we used to have, uh, we used to play Tuesday and Friday at this club called the Rose Tattoo. That's and, that's pretty that's pretty proficient because you know I I yeah. kept you know just looking back you know I I, I kept uh you know I sort of have a log of all the shows that like, we we played back then you didn't you know in, in, you didn't play that much but th that's pretty proficient for a 15 year a bunch of teenagers. Well, there was we weren't headlining or anything. It was uh, yeah. there was a, a local band called Shell Shock, right? And a local that kind of evolved into Crowbar. That's a whole another story. But oh, there wow. was a band called the Sluts, who mm. were like really the most punk band in New Orleans at that time. They were more sleazy and, like I said, about Dead Boys and, and the Germs. You know, they were cool. kind of that style. You know, and. Uh, they asked us to do this thing at this bar two times a week, open for them. You know that may have only happened for like a couple of weeks or maybe three weeks, but uh, we did it. You know, and it was I used to have to sneak. I was in a boys' home then, so I'd have to sneak out of the boys' home. But, but you, but the, you were you were you were woodshedding, man. You 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 were you were just you you yeah. were chopping wood, man. You know. Yeah, we even recorded like cassettes but like it never you know i wish that stuff still existed man i'd love to hear it now when when, when you talk about like this early punk and hardcore stuff going down in new orleans like my mind goes to was this happening like in the french quarter or was there like where did this kind of stuff go down in new orleans back then it was uh well being that young i couldn't i didn't have a car or anything you right. know there was a street car i could take around yeah yeah but, uh, I mean, it was just everywhere, kind of, you know, I guess. Like, there was, first of all, there was a band called The Normals uh, <laughs> right. in in 78. Like, they had a 45 out called uh, Almost Ready. Mm. And they, they're they kind of a rock and roll kind of, uh, they're, I, I guess they're, you, you don't even call them punk. They're kind of rock and roll, uh, British invasion kind of influenced Mm -hmm. But with a heavy guitar, you know, and like faster beats, you know. So that band would play locally. And my brother would take me to go see them, like in mm. bars. He worked at one of these bars called Jed's. Mm. And he'd take me there and uh, let me watch this band, The Normals, you know. And I would see people pogoing, you know, like, you know, back that's how long ago it was. You know, people pogoing. And what, what year do you think this was, 80? 70, 78. Wow. Yeah. End of yeah. 70. Well, yeah, 78. Wow. Probably the end of 78 going into 79, you know? Sure. But that I was fully into it. I, he took me to see the Talking Heads. That was like my first, like, big show. Like, in, it was this place called The Warehouse. 
Yeah, the warehouse in New Orleans. Yeah, that, famous that, place. Famous. I mean, famous going back to the '60s, really. Yeah, the Doors. Uh, the Grateful Dead. Apple. The Doors. You know, every, I, I mean, that was the place that anybody who came through New Orleans of That's that sort of psychedelic uh, era played sure. the warehouse. Fleetwood Mac, yeah. all that. Yeah. All that's all the '70s stuff. All that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Iggy Pop, I, Iggy, oh, Iggy and the Stooges opened for Kiss there. Wow. So that was, uh, yeah, stuff like that, you know. I saw The Clash there later on, like 1980, so. Wow. But, um, but yeah, that was one of the, those are the only two times I went there. But that, there's, I think there's a book of that venue now because yeah. it's so legendary here, you know. That's not around in any way, shape, or form, right? Oh, no, it got torn down and there's like a Walmart there or something now, you know. But, uh, but I saw the Talking Heads and the Normals opened for them, so that was like a wow. big moment for me you know just uh it's a interesting question for ray uh, from ray hogan did rock always take a back seat to funk rb and jazz etc in new orleans like you know i know i know you know new orleans is so you know steeped in this sort of heritage history yeah i mean did, did, did sort of this stuff get sidetracked to that it did in like the local paper and yeah. uh you know, any kind of weekly newspaper type thing, music paper or anything. It was always jazz, blues, R and B, just like you said, yeah, the yeah. Fun stuff, you know. Yeah. And um, I mean punk got like some recognition just for a short time as like this fad, you know, which it wasn't. Yeah. It's still right. but um yeah, like so the, it, the rock bands were there. Like uh in the suburbs there was more of like uh these Zeppelin cover bands and uh, there's sure. a band called Royal Orleans and uh, Ooh. Razor White. Phil and Selma was in uh, Razor White. So that was oh, bit wow. later on. But then there was a band called Zebra. Right. That was the big rock and roll band. They started out as a Zeppelin cover band, but wow. became huge and did originals they're still touring they're still oh, oh the band zebra zebra they moved to long island in the 80s i think yeah yeah they they what was that what was what was zebra's big hit um uh, they had uh, that, that yeah tell me your who's on the no. door well, who's on the door is one of them uh yeah they had a moment they yeah. did yeah they were on yeah. mtv and all yeah this yeah stuff. I did not know they were from down there i thought they were long island yeah ray says yeah, moved to long, yeah moved to long island Right. Yeah, they moved up there to try to make it. And I guess Twisted Sister was the big yeah. thing at the time. So they didn't really get that much. Oh, that's it. Tell more. me what you want. Tell me what you want. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Tell me yeah. what you want. Yep. Tell me what you want. Who's on the door? Wait until the summertime. That's a, I love that album. That's a oh. great album, the first one. Hey, did, did you, did you like hate that shit as a, as a teenager, like the jazz and blue shit? Did you just, did you, did you despise that stuff at the time? You know, it was like that thing where you kind of had to say you didn't like stuff because, like, yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah. peer pressure going on, right? You know, it was like, right. If if you liked, well, that happened to me later when I got into some metal stuff. A lot of my friends <laughs> wouldn't talk to me anymore. You know, right. like, uh, he likes metal. You know, it's like, yeah. well, I mean, what's wrong with it? You know, but uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, the jazz. I, to this day, now I love jazz and I love yeah. blues a lot. You know. So all well, well, stuff, things yeah. go things go back, right? Right. It's like we we sort of circle back. It was like at first, yeah. you know, when this hardcore thing was, yeah, fuck them, you know, fuck yeah, Marshall, yeah. Marshall Tucker band, they suck. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I even said Leonard Skinner sucked at one yeah. time when I was a teenager, you know. But now yeah. I, you know, fucking love everything by them, you know. Yeah, Leonard Skinner never never sucked. <laughs> no. Great musicians, you know. Yeah, just, they're just. Leonard Skinner and I, I feel like are like the most punk uh, Southern rock band that ever existed. They did not give a fuck, no. Yo, they like knocked, they knocked each other's teeth out. Like, oh, those, yeah. Yo, Gary Rossington. Gary, yeah. They didn't Gary put Rossington up record label punk. shit or anything, you know. They, yeah. were, they were out there for the, for the win. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so how did, I mean, and, and after this was Suffocation by Filth, right? And then I Hate God? Well, there was a, uh, after Teenage Waste, there was a couple bands that we tried to get together here and there with different people. And uh, yep. there was a good, Teenage Waste probably ended in like 82. 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, I started getting into other stuff like post punk stuff, you know, like birthday party and sure, you know, joy division, things like that. And kind of also metal too, like the new wave of British heavy metal stuff. I was really into about that time, Iron Maiden and all the, the, the sh smaller bands putting out right. their own 45s back then seven inches for the younger kids. 45s is like, yeah, yeah. I don't even think people say that anymore, but yeah. Um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, so I was getting into that and just kind of opening my mind to different types of stuff. So it was a good, probably a good three years before Suffocation by Filth got together. And we mm. were influenced by punk and hardcore still, but also the new thrash stuff that was coming out, you know, like Exodus and Slayer and the German bands, Destruction and Sodom and those but at the same we used to do a sodom cover mm. and a bad brains cover <laughs> in the same it, set yeah in the same set that's cool so we were we were just like we love all this stuff we don't care whose hair is short or long like some yeah. people were still fighting about that you remember that right if a long hair showed up at the gig you <sighs> fucking get knocked out <laughs> oh yeah listen um, yeah I'm, I'm from new york city yeah right <laughs> you have to remember that yeah 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 but, but uh, uh, yeah. I started thinking like hair doesn't matter, you know, like these bands are good. I started listening to a lot sure. of stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, a absolutely. And how, and, and how does, what are the, what are the origins of I hate God? Uh, well, I guess suffocation, my filth only played maybe 10 shows. We weren't around that long. And uh, then I had a band called crawl space, which was right. kind of short lived as well. That was more kind of thrash, but a little voivod ish style in there mm -hmm. and uh it, they actually put out an album after i quit and they mm. called themselves stress ball so that's basically mm. with some different songs and stuff but anyway so after that uh i went on tour with the band shell shock who jimmy bauer was playing drums with at the time you know they had they had changed their style a little bit a little more metal at the time it was like 80 85 86 you know so um i went on tour with them as like their roadie merch guy i didn't do a lot but i was mascot kind of thing well that's and, what you uh, did then you brought you know you brought as many of your people as well, you yeah. brought as many of your boys as you could back then it was exactly. like you know sure. yeah, yeah man he's yeah he's gonna do merch and he's gonna help load the sure. equipment in me yeah. equals me equals he ain't gonna do shit He's gonna no. drink, he's gonna drink our beer. He's gonna <laughs> fucking do as many drugs as possible, and he's right. gonna try to and he's gonna try to fuck anything that moves. Sure, yeah, of course. So I, <laughs> they threw me in the van, and me and Jimmy were friends. I was, you know, all those guys are like my best friends. And but then, uh, like around, I guess we were touring the '86 tour, and mm -hmm. me and Jimmy were listening to a lot of like the early Melvin stuff and like well, Saint Vitus. Mm. Uh, I mean, who else? The the obsessed like demos and Saint, stuff. Saint, Saint Vitus before Wino joined. Yeah, yeah. That I found out about Saint yeah. Vitus through Black Flag. Yeah, because like, they were because they were on SST. They were on SST and they talked about them a lot. Like I go see Black Flag and they'd be like, "This band Saint Vitus, you you gotta right. check them out." And so yeah, we yeah, did, yeah. and I just loved this deliberately yeah. slow. Because that you know at the time like thrash was big, yeah. hardcore was big. It was hardcore to me was kind of going downhill a little bit, like getting yep. generic. Mm -hmm. So uh, playing slow like that pissed people off at the time. It wasn't you know to a punk crowd that wasn't what you did you know. So I like that. I thought that was more punk than anything to piss the crowd off. So. I don't know. We started getting into all this slow stuff, you know, like the animosity. Were, 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 were these 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 previous fans? Were you guys tuned down at all? Because or 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 because I know Saint Vitus was tuned down, uh, but then again, I'm thinking you 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 were influenced by Sabbath, and they were pretty tuned down. So yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't, you know, I was the singer in all these bands, so I right. think that most of the bands were not tuned as low as I Hate God was in the yeah, beginning, yeah. you know. We right. used to tune pretty as low as we could, you know, right. that 1988, you know, we were just trying right. to come out there and just right. be slow and heavy, right? you know, and, and so that's how that started. I mean, Jimmy yep. had the idea on that tour with Shellshock 
we we're like, man, we got to start a slow band like these guys. Like, this is what's cool. This yeah. is what we like right now. This is 1987, 86. Right. So, you yeah, know. Because, because before, like 85, 86, there was a lot of the crossover stuff. Everybody, yes. a lot were jumping out in that direction. You know, hardcore metal, crossover, that. Cool, the, yeah. and, you, and you guys said, we're going to do something a little different. Yeah, I consider us a crossover band because we crossed over with the hardcore punk and the slow right. stuff, you know? Right. So there's all those influences in there. Right. You know? And and of course, the 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 sort of moniker that I used when I introduced you to the show, uh, you know, sludge, yeah. it, it, that didn't exist. That 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 was something that was a, a label that was put on it ten years later. You it know? was, yeah. And uh I used to get really mad when people called us that. Because yeah. we never were that, you know, I mean, yeah. it's like, a, you know, people have to put a label on everything. I understand yeah. that. I used yep, to yep. Read journalism reviews. And so, so mm -hmm. I get you have to kind of name genres, but uh, I just did not like that name. I it thought it was it was just like the grunge thing, but sludge, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I used to really get pissed about that that word but uh now i just accept it it's you know it is what it is but yeah. uh yeah it didn't exist when we started that was not a term at all sure so so how does i hate god come together you jimmy who else comes to the party initially well it was me and jimmy's idea pretty much then i was doing crawl space at the time so another friend of jimmy's was the vocalist for like maybe two rehearsals you know mm -hmm. so he that's a whole story there he kind of went crazy we had to bring him to a mental ward <laughs> it's a long it's kind of a long thing but uh damn so, yeah so he freaked out he's a born again christian now the first singer for a god so i immediately as soon as chris was out I was like, I'm, I'm, I want to be an I hate God really bad because it was our idea, you know. And like, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to be in the band with Jimmy, you know. So I quit Crawl Space basically, and I hate God just started rehearsing more and more. And we sent some rehearsal tapes to Maximum Rock and Roll, which was just like terrible recorded tapes, you know. They they were pretty badly recorded, but uh, Chris Dodge from uh who used to write from that who's in spaz and uh -huh. he's been in a bunch of bands he reviewed it and said it was heavy and cool and he liked it so we started getting mail from that you know and like that's cool roll down the hill from there just you know like just kept going and and, and, and early on i mean you guys banged out uh the garden dwarf you did a couple of demos right you did yeah. the garden dwarf uh driver demo and Woman a year later yeah, yeah the, the, a year later, the the other demo, the lack of uh, of almost everything, right? Yes. And, and, and you did these two demos, and and then uh, what, what I'm tr what what I'm trying to do is I'm leading us to sort of this. I'm leading us to this, right? Yes. Now, the first was, album. The first album. The first. I hate got him. Was, was was this was this this initially when it came out, it, it was on, uh, uh, it was not on Century Media initially, right? No, no. Right. From those demos that Chris Dodge reviewed, uh, one of them being the rehearsal thing I was talking about, but um, yep. this French guy got in touch with us. We actually, a bunch of like really underground labels got in touch with us. And, uh, wanted to put out an album when we were like blown away because we didn't think we would we, we were just doing this as a side band we didn't think how, how were people how the, how the fuck were people in france and in and, and europe like can like hearing this stuff i guess uh, uh uh well i used to send out a lot of demos if people ordered them you know but the the ad in maximum rock and roll had my address uh. in it Right. So people, I think I may have put a little classified in there at one point. Yeah, yeah. So people were hearing it, and um, King Coffee from Butthole Surfers ordered one of the demos or something. Like he wanted to put us on his uh, Trance Syndicate label at one point. Wow. But uh, we had we had all these offers, you know, and they were just all underground labels. But sure. 
we were just shocked that we even were being asked to do an album. We were like, this noisy fucking thing we're doing here. Yeah. So, you know, we recorded that and it was on a, a label called Intellect, Intellectual Intellectual Convulsion. Okay. Mouthful that. Yeah. But uh, that was a, a French label. There's very few of those in existence. If anybody's got a copy of one of those, I need one. That's the, the very first printing in 1990 of In the Name of Suffering on Intellectual Convulsion Records. Yeah, it's not easy to say that Intellectual yeah. Convulsion. Okay. Uh, RS, uh, our friend and supporter asks, was that house in New Orleans? No, you know what? That house is from a book or something. I think it was a house that was uh, in a cemetery somewhere. And okay. I just wanted to do, I did all this art. I just wanted to do something different. You yeah. know, that's why the logo is so plain, you know, and just, it's it's just kind of supposed to look like a spray paint stencil or something. Like, I didn't want to do any fancy logo or any, you know, thing. I don't know. I just went with the house. That was originally the back cover. The uh, the the photo of, like, the uh, the two naked girls and... Uh, there's like people with skin diseases and stuff. That was the front mm -hmm. cover. But Century Media, when they re-released right. it, they right. they would not do that. They banned that cover. So they put this as the front, which is fine. <laughs> it's fine, you know. I like this cover, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to. It's something different, you know. It's just yeah. a fucking old house, you know. Like it gives yeah. off the vibe to me, you know that house. A absolutely, it, it definitely set the table. Um, yeah. You you mentioned Century Media. How does Century Media come to the party? Another label that got in touch with us and uh, just wanted to do something with us. And I think we're offering us a bunch of money to re-release that record and uh, also send us to Europe. You know, we were like, well, this is good for a side band. We're going to put out an album and go to Europe for free. So we signed on the dotted line like idiots. And, you know, we didn't have a lawyer. We couldn't afford a lawyer or nothing. So we signed that 400 album deal or whatever it was. And and we and we talk about that deal. We talk about the deal. You yes. Know, that, that you signed that deal. And, and yeah. you know, there's a Century Media deal, which is very similar to the Roadrunner deal, which right. many, many, many bands signed, right? I mean, yeah. whether it's Century Media you know, uh, on Roadrunner, you know, Life of Agony, Typo Negative, Mad Ball, you know, Century Media. You could, I mean, this was the deal, and we've talked about it a lot. It was like a seven-record deal. Yeah. Um, you give up your fucking publishing, um, and your fucking merch was cross-collateralized with everything else. So there was no yeah. real way. There was no real way for you to make to, to make any money because. And I'm and I'm explaining this for once again. I'm explaining this for, to everybody out there with this yeah. kind of a re record deal, so people understand. You sign a deal, and if you spend, you know, let's say a whole bunch of money uh, recording the record, right? And let's say the record doesn't sell that much. Since sure. things are cross collateralized, what what they will do is, if you sold some T-shirts and stuff, they'll take that. The T-shirt money helps pay, you know, helps pay yeah. off. The, the, you know, and, and you're publishing or whatever. So it's all yeah. cross collateralized and it's hard, it's hard to kind of get ahead until you do. Yeah. And then they do this to young bands too. I mean, we were like twenties, you know, early twenties. Yeah. We didn't know what we were doing. Plus right. it was a side band to us. We all had other right. bands. We were thinking free trip to Europe, you know, put out an album. Yeah. This band will be over. Like we won't be doing it. Right. Here it is 30 <laughs> seconds later, you know, we're still doing it. But yeah, yeah, they do that to kids. They they purpose they know what they're doing, these labels that these kids yeah, I, I think I, I think I think part of it because you know I was a part of that era and I was involved with a lot of bands. I managed yeah. a couple bands that signed the deal, you right. know. What are you looking at? What else are you looking at at that moment? You know, that it's not it's it's you know, people have a tendency to take sort of like today's environment and and sort of social media conscious and sort of put that into you know 1993 yo it wasn't like that there wasn't yeah. a lot of labels knocking on the door there was not a lot of opportunities no 
But that, and that's why we did it, you know? We yeah. We figured, right. you know, this, this band will be broken up within a year or so, and our right. other bands will be doing things. So let's just, yep. let's, let's sign it, you know? Let's go to Europe and have fun and then, you know, come back and get our other bands off the ground, you know? And But, uh... I mean, you, you guys have put out a lot of records on. Have you? Did you guys work through that deal, or or, or did you resign? We uh no. What we did was uh <laughs> what we did was uh we ended up making a deal with them to do those two albums uh, that I'm not a big fan of. Southern Discomfort. That's right. an obligation record. It's right. got live stuff and demos. Demo and demos, right? And outtakes, uh, outtakes yeah. stuff. Dope and, and, uh, outtakes from Dope Sick, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, um, Confederacy? The, uh, 10 Years of Abuse. 10 oh, Years 10 of years abuse. abuse. That was a live album. It was live, but it was mixed up from all these different... These right. We were just like... They were like, give us two albums and you're off the label. So we threw a bunch of shit together and gave it to them. So we were off. They they got the reels back though, which sucks. But you know that was part of the deal. But we were off, you know. Then so yes. it was good to you're, be. Off. You're like one of the few bands that actually worked worked through to the end of their fucking deal, huh? Well, we didn't put out. We only put out like what three records with them. We didn't do the other four, you know. But I mean, those two we didn't record new ones. You know what I mean? Right. So I guess we did like five records. Out of the, right. the contract, I see. I we see. probably still owed them a couple, but they let it go if we gave them this, these crappy records. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel? Do you feel? Um, how do you? Looking back in retrospect, are you are are you happy with with the legacy of this record and 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 sort of looking back on it? Do you feel good about it? I mean, now when I listen to it, I'm just like, man, we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> It sounds crazy to me now. Yeah. To it. But I mean, and we didn't know how to write songs yet, really, either on that album. We were kind of piecing together riffs and parts, you know, like, so, but it, like I said, with anything, it is what it is. It's like, yeah. some people love that album. It's like their favorite I Hate God album, which right. is great, you know, but yeah. I prefer our progression later on, you know, that's just the debut record that's kind of messy. And sounds crazy, but you know. this was this this was the original cover that you mentioned. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Century Media um, did not want to put that out in stores. <laughs> yeah, it's a little disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess I understand, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but hey, that that's 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 what we were going for. So, yeah. so you guys go over to Europe, you know, and sort of the you start going around the merry-go-round, and what do you find you, that that you develop a fan base? Yeah, I mean, when we got to Europe, we found that we already had people who had the album and were like knew the songs and stuff, you know. So, and we were already doing stuff that was going to later be on "Take Is Needed for Pain," so we were. Right. Doing some of those songs, which are a little, they're, they're, the songwriting's way better on that album. Songs are put together more. So, but uh, yeah, man, it was a great experience going over there. We went over there with Crowbar the first time ever. And uh, right. Yeah, there's a Century Media ad. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and this was the second full length, and you guys went in a little bit more together and focused. Well, I don't know if focused is the, I don't know if you were unfocused initially, but. At least you, you sort of approached it a little a little differently. As only I hate God can do, man. Yeah, yeah we went in uh, <laughs> completely out of our minds and threw this thing together. But the songs were, like I said, they were just more structured and written out. I think <clears throat> the riffs are amazing on there, Jimmy's riffs and Brian too, Brian Patton. I think it was just put together more and it was more like what we wanted to sound like from the beginning, you know, I see. I think it, it shows what we were trying to do more than in the name of suffering. You know, this is like what we were, our goal was to get something like this, you know? Yeah. And this is when you kind of came across my, my radar screen because, you know, a big, big, big supporter and fan of, of I hate God was Scott Koenig. You know? Sure. Yeah. And, and, yeah, Scott Koenig, who managed Biohazard, 
loved I Hate God. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, and this, this is really the first uh, record that, that, that kind of came across my radar screen because he fucking played it all the time. You know? Right. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 93, I actually moved to Brooklyn. I lived mm. up there till like 96, 97, close mm. to 97. So uh, I, I had meetings with Scott up at yep. the, uh, what was that? The um, Def Jam office? The Def Jam offices, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with all the, the Run DMC gold records and stuff. And yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. I, I have I have one. <laughs> I know. I remember you saying that in another episode. Yeah. 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 But that, 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 that we, I did a music video for them back in the day. Yeah. Right. So, cool. But yeah. But that was an interesting place. Because you, you had all this hip hop shit, and then you had Scott Cohen managing heavy bands. Yeah. So yeah, he was a big fan, man. He there yeah. was like talk of like uh, I guess Evan Seinfeld was gonna like direct a video for us or something. There Is was, that right? Like, there was all this talk of doing stuff with Biohazard. Apparently, those guys were fans as well. You know. Correct. Correct me. Hold on. You know what? Let me find the ad for this because. All right. I think um cuz if cuz i was you know i was uh in the in the mix for all this leaf fine here it is were you guys for some reason i seem to remember initially were you guys supposed to be on this bill with biohazard at roseland we did play that we played that you, you did we play that we had like a 10 to 15 minute set. You did play this. We did. All the okay. bands played really short sets, it seemed. Like yeah. The opening yeah. bands, like us. But you did play this. We did. We did. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian okay. Bach was there that yeah, day. Yeah. yeah which yeah. was bizarre. I don't this know. This was a we... great, this was a great show. This was a, you know, Biohazard's we homecoming show. There was a big crowd, you know, and yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah. We yeah. had a very short set. I don't know, just to get us on the bill, I guess. But uh, yeah, Scott Koenig hooked it up. Right. That that's it. Yeah. 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 Paulie says I saw that short the Roseland. Yeah. Oh, cool, a, man. Cool. That was a great. That was a great place to play. Actually, Roseland. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Very very rich rich in uh, history. Rich, rich in history. Yeah. Um. So so as things are going on, I mean, one thing about I Hate God, from where I was standing, was. You guys were you guys were road dogs, man. You guys would go out and fucking play, and you guys were always fucking playing, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, you guys just love fucking being like, or, or did you have nowhere to live, or like you guys were always playing? Sometimes I didn't have anywhere to live, but uh, you know, it was like it's, <laughs> it's better to be on the road than be homeless. But uh, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, we kind of took that ethic, the black flag ethic, yeah, you know, right. from back in the day, and like. Sure. Just to just keep at it and just tore our asses off constantly, you know. Right. And I mean, we're still having fun doing it, you know. That's that's what matters to me, you know. We're still doing it, you know. Yeah, that's it. A- we'll do it until we can't, I suppose. But uh, yeah, like '93, that's when it all started. The touring, you know. We didn't really tour much before that. '93, right. that European tour, we got the bug, you know. We we're like, we got to do some more stuff. We went out with Buzz Oven a couple times and many, many tours after that. COC. Was it exciting to get into some of those nooks and crannies like Eastern Bloc countries and places like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love doing that. Yeah. I love exploring all that stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a lot different, you know? I think, well, the wall came down in, what, 89, right? The Berlin Wall. So yeah. that was yeah. over, but... uh. Things are still a little strange, like playing Leipzig, which is Eastern. You know. <laughs> yeah, I was there with Biohazard in like '92. Right. And, uh, yeah, it was Leipzig, man. Leipzig. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You, Some of you, those places. Yeah. 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 Chemnitz funny. is another place, yeah. Eastern, Eastern Germany. You know, it's just like wow, man. They, yeah, yeah. they they didn't have their shit together yet. You know, they're still yeah, building. yeah, yeah. And trying so, to get so, so I mean I know it's a couple years later, but that kind of leads to dope sick, right? After take is needed, yeah. Yeah. After take, take is needed yeah. for pain was dope yep. sick. Yep, yep. Three years later, yeah, 96. Yeah. 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 And yes. uh uh 
I got to, you know, do, doing my homework, I, I got to read this, this, this bit here. Okay. Um, and, I, <laughs> and, and, and I quote, um, the recording sessions were infamously chaotic and involved the studio owner repeatedly calling Century Media to ask if the band was mentally unstable and threatening to kick them out. This particular incident occurred after Mike Williams had attempted to record the sound of smashing glass for the introduction to the album by smashing a bottle on the floor of the studio. In the process, he slashed open his hand and bled all over the studio floor. This recording, this recording did make it to the record as the introduction to the first track, My Name is God, I Hate You. One of the band members then apparently smeared the words hell and death to pigs in Williams' blood on the wall. All true. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, nothing, uh, there's no bullshit to that. That's all true. Yeah. What, what, what studio was blessed with, with, with this recording? It was, uh, it was called studio one and it was out in Metairie out in the suburbs. And, uh, I, I, we, we were in, New, in New Orleans. Orleans. What's that? In New Orleans. Yeah. A suburb called Metairie okay. of New okay. Orleans. And so it was sure. out there, uh, the guy had never seen or heard anything like us. He was used to doing like rock bands and whatever yeah. else, you know? Sure. So he freaked out, but uh, <laughs> that album's kind of a mess, man. We were, we were on a lot of drugs around that time. So it's, uh, I'll listen to it. I'm like, Oh geez, what was yeah. that? Yeah. That, that happens, right? Yeah. And then it got mixed in San Francisco and there was more drugs there. So it's like, right. it, but people love this album. I hear people say this is their favorite one. I'm like, cool. That's cool. It's, it, it's, it's chaotic. Yeah. You know, it's chaos. It's interesting what people gravitate to, right? Yeah, yeah. It's great that, that you know, that they can pick one. Kind of incredible that the band, you know, as it went on, w was able to function uh, it, uh, on such a, uh, with such a, a touring and playing when you know such a such copious amounts of narcotics and alcohol were involved, I mean, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, would you guys, you, would you guys have a like a great tour manager? <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed we survived any of that, honestly. Yeah, huh? We just, you know, we had to make do in every city, you know, yeah. like with with something, <sighs> you know. So we we figured it out. You know, it wasn't easy <laughs> though. I mean, what's yeah. the, what's the, what's what's on the? Hey, we're going to Amsterdam tomorrow. Hallelujah! Right. <laughs> Halla fucking. Oh, we're going to Hamburg. Or, or we're going to yo. We're going to Zurich. Hamburg, Hallelujah. yes. Train stations. Come on now. The Bahnhof in Hamburg. Yeah. Hey, listen. I don't want to get into all the great dope copping spots in yeah. Europe, but but you know Hamburg train station. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah, man, there's there's so many stories and so many yeah. dates that, that yeah. happened and and yeah. <laughs> being miserable for days and then you know, it's it's crazy. Uh, w w was it? Uh, yeah, Gertie's like, ha ha, I'm from Germany. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yo, I mean, God, it must have been. It must. I mean, to sidetrack, must be absolutely excruciating and difficult to get on stage and perform. When, when you're just fucking, when you're dope sick, man. I mean. Well, there's a couple yeah. times that I regretfully mm. just left the tour. Yeah. You know, so I, I admit that honestly now that yeah. it was just too much for me, you know, mentally yeah. and physically, I couldn't yeah. do it. So I just like left the band and went home. And um, that happened around, 2000 to the year 99 2000 and uh we kind of didn't convene for a few months after that because like i was just i had to get my shit together you know like that was when it got at its worst pretty much you know well listen drugs and alcohol right it's yeah like, i mean you know opiates specifically will yeah. will we'll, we'll take will take us down that path man you know? It's sure will, yeah. 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 It, yeah. It, it it's it's hard to control that stuff, man, especially being in a band, you know. Yep. I mean, what I think about is how illegal we were riding down the highway with like bundles and fucking syringes and just all these things in the van, like we, you know, just 
all of us, everybody in the band, it's just, and you're just cruising on the highway. Like we could have all just gotten locked up so bad, but. Incre incredible. Survived. Yeah. yeah. When, you th when we think back to some of, some of our, uh, our escapades uh, as, young, as young people. I shudder uh, when I think. I'm yeah, like, oh, I, I do too, man. I do too. Here in, here, here in New York, some of the shit that I did, man, just horrible, man. Oh, yeah. New York was, you know, we loved playing New York. <laughs> we loved playing New York. <laughs> we played ABC No Rio and you just, you just oh. walk outside, you know, and it's, there you go. It's you know, you know, f f funny, funny. In it, the it, 90s? Shit, man. It was it's, just in my new, it's in my new book. JJ, yeah. JJ from who sings for Discharge now, right. was, was a punk kid from Jersey who used to come to, yeah. to ABC. He tells a story about he was a block from ABC No Rio, and somebody, you know, somebody tried to sell him dope. And another guy that was dealing got into an argument with the guy that was, you know, and they started fist fighting. Right, the two, and he's standing right there, and the cops pulled up, and they fucking threw their shit on the sidewalk and ran off, and the cops chased them, and JJ like picked what? up a package of a couple bundles and went into ABC No Rio, and like everybody got hammered. Holy shit, man! Funny story. It's in my new book. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, yeah I know yeah. JJ. He's awesome. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, yeah. He is. so but man, you know. that's that's ridiculous, man. Yeah. That would be. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, you know what I had, you know what I had in my notes? I mean, and, and, and while we're here, we're, sure. we're just address it a little bit, I'm but a, like, like, like for me, like there's certain music that um, is a little difficult and uncomfortable for me to hear because listen, music transcends all time and space. Right. And like yeah. there's certain music that you hear and it just brings you to this place. And there's a couple of things that like, I don't listen to t I don't listen to very often anymore because I it just brings me back to a very I difficult mean. Yeah. yeah so so like I don't listen to like the two so for me the two things are Alice in Chains and and Sid Barrett like those two things like bring me back to a, a, a like a crazy kind of place and is, is there any music that sort of like like you associate with that crazy error or that crazy behavior there is but it's i, I still listen to it though mm. <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, i mean i know what you mean though about music bringing you back but like i don't know i used to shoot a, shoot a lot of cocaine at one point and there's this band the fuck ups from san francisco and that was like i put that seven inch on every time like and it's still I associate that record with those. Those were not good times for me at all. That's a really bad thing to do with your life. Shooting cocaine is it's the hard. most most dangerous fucking thing you can do, and it is, it is to ring them bells, bro. You want to ring them bells, man? You yeah. you 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 you're, you're dancing. You you want you want to hear the angel wings flutter? Yes. You you're fucking it's you're it. fucking. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you're dancing you're dancing you're dancing with the fucking devil man i mean you, you you're, you're right there man it's it started feeling evil like when i would do it i just felt like my whole life had this presence around it like this it's murderous dangerous. like yeah. evil presence i had yeah. to stop i just quit that you know yeah. i got arrested for that you know like yeah so like it was just you know, going to jail always sets your mind straight a little bit about. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, are you referring to are you referring to the whole thing that happened after Katrina and all that? No, is, this is that, in like two thousand two or three. This is is before that, right? Yeah, one of the yeah. other ones. Yeah, you know. but, but but that that's that that's that's dangerous dangerous stuff. And, I know. Uh, man. Yeah, thankfully we 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 survived that. You know, uh, <laughs> Larry Kelly says jail have. Yes. Like jail have like rehab. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. I oh. know the feeling. Yeah. J it's jail not have. a good feeling at all. It's just yeah. like your lowest point, you know, when that happens. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Enough of that drug talk. But, uh, but yeah. So, but, 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 but actually also, you know, I know, uh, you know, you ran at it pretty hard and you had a liver transplant, right? I did in 2015. Wow. You know, like I said, that happened to I Hate God and like, uh, 
the year 2000, I had to take a break for a few right. months, you know, and um, we eventually, you know, convened and got back together and everything. But uh, of course, relapse happens and, you know, a slip, as they call it, you know, a s slipped up a bunch of times, you know, <laughs> and went through periods where I was still trying to just beat this thing, all of it, you know, alcohol, every drug, you know, all that. So it just, uh, you know, it took till like 2015 or so, like mainly that was a lot. The drugs had like subsided, but it was uh, just lots of vodka, like around from like 2010 to like, you know, just drinking like two of these giant bottles a day, like, but then I guess with how my liver already had been damaged by all the drugs and that, so the booze didn't help at all. And then- Did you, did you have hepatitis C? Yeah, I did, I did. Yeah, so, so did I. And, uh, you know, I, I had hepatitis C for years and, you know, I tried that interferon, it didn't work. And oh, then, yeah. But then they had me hang in there, hang in there. It's right around the corner. It's right, right. around the corner. It's right around the corner. Or voting. Yo. And then it showed up and my insurance covered it. Same. And it fucking knocked it out. That was it. I, 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 that was it. Yeah. That that stuff was expensive too. I did that that treatment. It, mine was called Harvoni. Yeah. It was, a it was like, I don't know, it was like a, a six week period. Yeah. They even made me do it twice, the whole thing. The program yo my insurance covered it and, and it was it was a felt it was the whole treatment was like i think it was like one hundred twenty thousand dollars. It, it it was like 500 bucks a pill or something crazy and like more than that probably yeah that's what i did it was like the the actual pills you know miracle it, 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 was a, it was a miracle it was amazing man i never yeah. You know, I had it after interferon, they were starting to say that that's not good for you. You know, that's starting to, wasn't really working, I guess, for some people. And so yeah. I never tried the interferon, but that Harvoni stuff really, yeah, really. And, and, our, and, and, and listen, and yeah, honestly, Jeffrey Zukowski, yeah, this is real talk right here. This is real shit that we don't like. This is a, an opportunity, you know, to, for me and Mike, this is some real talk right here. But, but, yeah. but, you know, um thank god our insurance covered that man yes we'd be dead that much money that cost him that yeah. much there's no way i could have afforded it then Meaning, yeah. so i'm i'm clean and sober now 15 years oh so, that's great yeah. yeah so and i'm listen and, and every, people you know everything i do and and the show and the focus i have and the clarity i have sure, yeah I'm, I'm very grateful for for to, to be given the opportunity uh, to, to, to be taking a run at it, man. Still you know? alive, man. That's, yeah. that's what counts, you know, good, good, good stuff, man. And I, and I, and I'm, and I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad you pulled your head out of your ass too, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same with you, man. Yeah. 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 And Larry yeah. Kelly, you'd you know? be a lesson to anybody out there, you know, that it, it will, you either go to prison or die. Those yeah. are the only two choices. If you keep doing this, yep. you know, absolutely. Absolutely. fucking lootly. Um, you know, let me see if we, if we, Hey, let's talk about some music. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Music. Sure. Um, you know, bef bef before we, before we take a break and then we're going to come back with, with Devin from DTFM vinyl distro, he's okay. going to do a little sh show and tell. Listen, I just want to say to everybody out there, I know there's some people watching the show for the first time towards the end, we're going to take questions from around the world. So all your questions will be addressed. We're going to do a nice long show today. No real rush. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not stressing it today, but, but, but before, before we go, uh, yeah, glad I stopped before fentanyl became a thing. Yeah. No shit. Same here. Yeah. 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 yeah I feel too. really bad for these people, yeah. man. It's, it's, a, it's looks terrible out there now. Alex Spunky. I'm one month sober from fentanyl and all I can say that is all true. Well, our heart goes out to you, Alex, yes. man. Fucking hang yeah. in there. Keep, keep hanging in there. Up. Yep. Like the poison idea avatar there too. Just keep it up, man. Yeah. Just hang in there, man. You know. Uh wow, looks like we got some of our Russian friends checking in. Nice show. Love Mike. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Love you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have you been to Russia and like uh yeah? Yes. We played Moscow. Wow. Super packed show. 
insane fans. It, it was great. We played St. Petersburg as well. Wow. And uh, insane fans, like they're grabbing at you, pulling you. Like it was like insane. It was it was really cool, man. Yeah. I don't know if we'll ever be able to go back. You know, like yeah, with all that's going on in the world. It's crazy. We but almost we almost played Ukraine too. Uh, forget the year now, but uh, it was right when COVID. Oh, it was, it was twenty nineteen. It was about mm. the beginning of twenty twenty. We right. were we were in Kiev, and. Uh, it came on the news that they're shutting down everything for COVID March. So we flew back immediately and blew that show. And I still regret it, man. Ugh. I wanted to play Kiev so bad, but yeah, it just wasn't in the books for that. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before, I, I, you know, you, you were working at metal maniacs at a certain point, you moved up to Brooklyn for three years. Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, l l let's, let's talk about that for a minute before we take a break. Uh, okay. I mean, I mean, uh, how did how did that? And, and, and you know what? Let me quote a little bit from my homework, okay? Okay. Um, uh, your girlfriend Alicia Morgan was was the editor, and I guess she she co-wrote a couple of "I Hate God" lyrics at some point, right? Um, yeah. And you yeah. say, "I started out, I started out just writing. I'd moved to New York. Uh, Catherine had asked Alicia if I wanted to write stories, so that's how I ended up at Metal Maniacs. During that period, we did a lot of different stuff for the magazine." When Catherine left, me and Alicia changed it or tried to. Maybe that's why we didn't last long. Maybe yeah. we were trying to change things too much. I changed the name of the firing squad column to Helter Skelter. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to change the name of the entire magazine. We were doing punk rock, a lot of grindcore, and I think Emperor's first feature in a magazine was during Alicia's time. Neurosis was in there for the first time. We were just trying to think ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we were. And... uh they seem to only want us to write about bands that advertised in the right. magazine or just or, or more, you know, accessible bands, you know, like Anthrax sure. and stuff like that, you know, or or Megadeth, you know, like those type of things. And we I was reviewing demos of like, <laughs> you know, what some raunchy black metal band or something, you know, <laughs> anything we could. We we wanted to get a website back then. This is like ninety five, and right, the right. owner of the whole magazine said, "There's no future in the internet." Oh, God. That was a quote from this guy. Jeez. I want to give his name really bad, but <laughs> <laughs> um, he ran that whole building, all the magazines that were in that place. You know, like, right? There was like it was all under the same umbrella. It was yeah, like Sterling Man yeah. the, the head, the, the name of the company, Sterling yeah. McFadden. They did. Right. You know, like Ebony, they did the wrestling magazines, they did the country magazine. Didn't they, they do another rock magazine? Didn't they do um they did Metal Edge? That's what it is. Which was that's more like glam and that's, stuff. right. And that's why both those magazines had like a similar tone to the layout. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the Metal Edge, the girl who edited that was in the cubicle right next to me. And like you was know, that was that what's her face? Was that was um she passed away recently. Um Oh, metal well, Edge was Catherine metal. Ludwig was the Metal Maniacs editor before Alicia. She passed away, but I no, forget the other girl. No, no, the the oh, I'm think. Oh God, she was she was the face of that. Um, it'll come. Someone will remember. Girl, I can't remember her yeah, name. Yeah, not Jen. Um, she had glasses. What the fuck? Big, tall gal. It'll someone I will remember. Yeah, she yeah. was. I can't remember her name. Yeah, but yeah. She, he did mostly like Skid Row, Poison type. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, that that was metal. That was metal edge, right? Right. Um, I'm looking it up. She, she, Jerry Miller. That's it. Jerry yeah. Miller. Jerry Miller. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. 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 Ferry Miller. No, it was Jerry Miller. Yeah. Ferry Millet. Yeah, Je <laughs> Jerry Jerry Miller. Yeah, she 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 and she was passionate about those bands. She, she was. She, yeah, she, she knew. She a lot. loved. She loved those fucking bands. Right. Yeah. No, totally. the, inter the interview's not over, bro. You, you where are you going? What you is got he a plane? Where are you, you going? Talking? We got another hour here. Relax. Yeah, what are you talking about, man? Fucking people, man. Yo, you fucking, you know, you draw they some crowd, people. man. <laughs> they don't understand. <laughs> Come on, man. You know? Yeah, Jerry Miller. She she was uh yeah, no, do I need to spell it out? No, we're gonna take a break. This is what's gonna. This is what's gonna happen. Larry knows. 
Yeah, this Larry knows. We're going to take a break because we have sponsors. We do a little sponsor break. Then we're going to come back and we're going to talk to Devin from DTFM Vinyl Distro. Uh, along, along with Mike, we're going to do a little show and tell. Then we're going to continue on our interview. Then we're going to take a real short break. And then we're going to take questions from around the world. All right? So, <laughs> so now that you know the format, so that said, yeah. So, all right. Um, so how long did you last there? How did it end? Um, God, uh, like a couple years, really. Like I went yeah. from just doing interviews, you know, the Catherine and would send me out to do interviews with whoever was in town, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I ended up, I just did a ton of interviews from the office too, you know, like just, I mean, there's so many to list, but, uh, then Catherine quit. So Alicia became the editor. And uh, they didn't like us from the beginning, you know, just yeah. the way I dressed, the way I looked, they, right, they right. didn't really care for us. And uh, I was still using at the time, too. I don't know if that, uh, <laughs> you know, you think you're hiding it, but you're not. So maybe that was part of it. Yeah. But uh, they they cut our budget, you know, things like that. They, uh, we like we said, we wanted to change the name of the magazine. We wanted a website. We were trying to make it more modern, you know, not just like old metal. We wanted to put all these new things in it, you know, like set grindcore, black metal, just every genre that was going on in, in the sure. punk metal scenes, you know. And they and, just, and, and also it was it was a time there was a need for a change with that magazine yeah. because the heyday of those bands had already passed and it was time yes. we desperately needed to do something different. Uh, that's what we wanted to do is change yeah. it and just, you know, make it hip again, make it to sure. the times, you know, relate to the times and, you know, being an underground stuff in both yeah. of us being into all this underground stuff, we thought this would be great. So we right. got away with it for a few issues. I even got listed as associate editor, I think on one issue, but, um, you know, it eventually got to, it, it started going downhill. Like, is, is, is it, of, is it safe to say that, having a job like that and doing work like that just really put you kind of in a position to uh, just sort of like me doing the show where I'm just connecting with so much music that I would never have really, you know, a guest comes on the show that I might not know. I do my homework and I'm like, yo, I love this. I love this artist that, you know, like yeah, this, sh definitely. this show like forces me, you know, forces me to just, you know, uh, expand my palette. Of, 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 yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were getting so much mail there, you know, and we'd take it all home and listen. I'd listen to every demo, every cool, EDR cool. with no band name on it. You know, some people send those, you know. Yeah. But uh, I'd listen to everything, you know, and it turned me on to a lot of stuff I didn't even know about, you know. So any, any anybody like from that era that like maybe came across your radar screen there that kind of went on to have like, you know, still around or like, yo, I remember the demo they sent me. Oh God! I mean, I can't think of anybody specifically, but there are things, you know. Yeah. There's definitely bands that went on to be bigger and and yeah. you know got some more recognition for sure. Makes sense. Hey, yeah. let me take a sponsor break, and uh, it'll be a couple of minutes. I'll come back. I'm going to talk about some upcoming shows. Ruben Devon on, and we will continue. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. See you in a bit. Yes, this is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. Uh, we're taking a sponsor break here. We're going to come back. We're talk about a couple things. Don't go anywhere. We're going to do que all your questions. We're going to address your questions later. Uh, let's get down with some sponsors. Peace. What it do? Welcome to NYT Comics at 117 Main Street, Dobbs, Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs, toys, collectibles. Got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer. Video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go. Skate decks all day, baby. We also have the young reader section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, the pops. People love the pops. Star Wars. <laughs> We are New York Hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it off. Will that be K? 
cash or in debt. Do you mean debit? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Another eternal satisfying customer. <laughs> hey guys, Vlad from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in new location on West Third Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger. We have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to, to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do. And we are happy to see you guys. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections of music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area, call or email generationrecords at gmail.com follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And we're back. This is the one, the only New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Hey, uh, I want to mention a couple upcoming shows. Hey, listen. Big banger coming up on Wednesday, huh? On the Mount Rushmore of American Hardcore, this Wednesday, Ian McKay from Minor Threat is going to be on the show. Uh, he was also in a band you might have heard of. They were called Fagazi. Um, uh, special guest Glenn E. Friedman is going to be on the show as well. Uh, a couple of days after that, the photographer Allison Brown from uh, L.A. took a lot of those great shots. Victor Carr from 108, February 14th. Ryan Packer from Slapshot Stars and Stripes on February 21st. CBGB 50th anniversary with Hilly Crystal's son Dana Crystal on Sunday, February 25th. Drew Thomas on March 3rd. Haven't announced this one yet. You hear it here first. From conservative military image, Adam Voss will be on the show March 6th. Mike Score, March 24th from All Out War. Haven't announced this one yet either. From Cop Shoot Cop, Swans, The Children, and That's Far Enough, Phil Polio will be on the show. Bob Japardi, if you remember Concrete Marketing and the Con Concrete Foundations Forum. And another one that we haven't announced, John Connolly from Nuclear Assault will be on the show Sunday, February, uh, April 14th. So lots of stuff coming on. Back, I don't think we've ever had this many shows booked. You know, usually is, a, you know, but shows are booked far into the future. And yes, there is a Patreon page. Please support the show, uh, the show that supports you. There's a Patreon page. There's a, you know, a $2 tier, a $5 tier. Uh, lots of exclusive content. You get the book for free. Lots of other stuff, please. Um, there's also a PayPal address there if you want to make a one-time donation. Donation. There is a super chat function as well. Uh, if you have a, a, a question, do a super chat function. It's a great way to support the show. Uh, you'll come right to the front, to the front of the line. Um, subscribe to the show. Uh, if you're watching it rerun, there's a subscription button there. Also on Instagram, if you have a communication device, follow the show on Instagram at Stone Films NYC. Um, I want to shout out a couple of my uh, new patrons and supporters. Uh, Karen, new patron, uh, Mark Borg, and Sebastian Gorgone. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for enabling. Thank you for being an enabler. You know? Uh, that you know what we 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 were talking about we we were talking about Bill Graham yesterday. Were you in on that conversation? We're talking about Bill Graham being a big influence on what I do. That's true. Um, yeah, that's right. CBGB, we're doing a CBGB show. Um, Jason, are you new to the party? Gotta admit, I didn't expect this, but I'm happily surprised. Well, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, so yeah. So that said. 
Join Patreon if you can. It, it is the best way to support the show. Please, if you enjoy the show and you watch the show, you, you support. Yeah, that's right. Mike Score from All Out War and John Connolly are both school teachers, and they're both coming on the show. Uh, that that said, let's bring let, let's clear the deck. What the heck? Let us bring on our friend and sponsor, all the way from Fargo, North Dakota, Mr. Devin Casavon. Hey, buddy. How's it going, Drew? How's Fargo, bro? Dude, it's like spring out here. I'm not even kidding. There's not a flake of snow on the ground. What the fuck, man? It's totally weird. It's throwing me off. You know what? When I was a kid growing up, it used to snow in New York. It doesn't snow here anymore. It's like, it, you know, like I used to like, you know, I don't even take the snow shovel and put it in the trunk of the car because it just doesn't, if it snows, it snows an inch or two and it melts. When I was a kid growing up here, you know, you'd have like snowstorms, you know? I remember when it would snow to the point where basically everything was covered in snow. It yeah. looked like a snow apocalypse. Doesn't it get friggin' cold though in Fargo, North Dakota? It's like 45 degrees outside right now. That's crazy. Hey, it's let's insane. bring let's bring let's bring Mike back on. Hey Mike. Yeah. You ever really? play you ever play Fargo, North Dakota? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah? And it was freezing when we were there. We <laughs> played it the last time you were here. Yeah, the last time we were there, it was it was ice cold. But we've played there before, and it was not bad, it, you know. So is, you know, is Fargo a tough destination? Because there's some places that like, you know, there's nothing close to it. You gotta like really, you know, is it what? Yeah, is it, yeah. Well, no, you used to be used to it used to be like Colorado, and then you go to Seattle. You right. know, but now there's like stuff in the middle, like you can right. you can go to and you know, we play Boise, uh, Idaho now, and you know, there's right. there's places you can you can get to to make your way to the West Coast, you know, yeah. so Colorado or the Midwest, you know. Yeah, whereas it used to be like you play Arizona and then you play Denver and there was nothing in between. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, we play Salt Lake City now, and it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, Too Devin, what, what, what do you got for us, man? So give us a little right. tour. Uh, bang through it. All right. So, first I got some local stuff right here. Prediction of the Witch Sworn into the Void. I just got these. It's sludgy. It's evil. It's dark. It's local, and it's awesome. <laughs> and I'm positive, Mikey, they opened for you last time you were here, but I'm not quite sure because that was maybe two years ago. Maybe. Oh, yo, here, yo, here, and here they are in the chat room. Predi yep. There you go. Get, <laughs> you get, getting some love. Yeah. Good for hey, that. Hey, Britta. Hey, Shane. Yep. And uh, up next, uh, you all just saw the commercial. Here's the music that comes from it. Some El Supremo. Fuzzy, loud, psychedelic metal. Instrumental metal. Great. And it comes on acid green vinyl. These guys are just amazing live. You got to check them out. Again, another local band. Definitely. Who, who, uh, who, who put who put that out? They put this them out themselves. Right. Cool. Independent. Very independent. Very cool. This is an album I've been waiting for for over a year because here's my Blood Pack membership card because I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alkaline Trio's Blood, Hair, and Eyeballs. Mm, and I've been hearing geez. nothing but good things. I'm going to listen to my copy today, but I hear it's the best thing they put out in 19 years. Okay. Not that they haven't put out some great stuff, but Crimson Man, that was the one. Mm -hmm. Here is probably my favorite Boston hardcore album. The last album from oh, Bane, Bane, Don't Wait Up. Yeah. Yeah. This Bane. album was a heavy hitter. Yeah. I got to see them Good play band. the show yeah. at the Triple Rock, which, Mikey, I remember seeing you guys play at the Triple Rock at the Bone Eggs. Yeah. Um, probably one of my top five shows. That was a great show that night. That was amazing. Who'd you play it with? It was down, right? Who'd you play with? The Chromags. Oh, right on. We did two tours with Chromags. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's with, right. With John's, John's Chromags. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. With Craig and Mackie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an excellent show. Mike and the Keith energy in the room just shifted. It was so incredible. It was great. And this this is on my new collector's rack. The strung out live in a dive reissue on special colored vinyl. 
This is a particularly interesting live album because this was recorded in 2002 and it's two live shows, one night show, one matinee show fused together. And the only way you would catch that is if A, you're listening really close in the middle or B, you read the credits because it sounds like one show. But it's it's right up there with the sick of it all live in a dive. It's just incredible. Oh, modern technology. Who would have thunk it? Right. Interesting. <laughs> is that it? That is all I got for you. That went fast, man. Oh, Rick, Rick says Strung Out's new record shreds. I need to hear it. Yeah. Hey, I gotta send you, I gotta send you some incendiary device records. Yes, you do. Yeah. All right, let's talk soon, buddy. All right. And thank you so much for, for supporting the show and being a sponsor, man. Thank you for having me on. Nice talking to you, Mikey. Yeah, you too, man. Take See it you easy. later, Devin. See ya. Bye. All right. Hmm. Good dude. Yeah, yeah. You know? Cool. Yeah, yeah. He's, I, I always like, I like bringing him on and like, what do you got? You know? Yeah, he's, sure. Yeah. He, he's, he's, an, he's an enthusiastic guy. Um, let's pick it back up. Uh, let me see. Let me see where we were at. Um, you know what I wanted to touch on? Uh, uh, Arson Anthem, which, yes. which, which, you know, in doing my homework, you know, I, I came back, you know, being a hardcore guy, right? I kind of, I, I came back to that a couple of times. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really, really, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, that was that was you and Phil and and Hank Williams the third. Yes. And a, a bass player uh, named Colin Yeo. Mm. But um, that was right. We In 2005, there was a, a little storm called Katrina that hit yeah. New Orleans. Right. So uh, I was uh, – I, I, a lot happened. It'll be in my book one day. But uh, mm. a lot happened, but I, I ended up in jail after that for uh, – um, looting a pharmacy basically but uh hey listen you gotta you gotta take gotta take advantage of all opportunities man you got to you got to so that's a whole story in itself right. but uh so after i got out uh phil helped me get out actually on bail and uh i went to stay at his house that's when i started living out there you know out in Folsom, where he where he's at but uh and i bumped into you there you did you were filming the michael and lego interview of phil yeah. yeah that day yeah. And so I, actually I, while, while you guys were doing that me and michael went out back on the porch and talked for like an hour or two like it was great right. yeah but uh anyway so i lo I lost everything in that storm you know i lost all my you lost it in the hurricane or, or i heard did, did your place burn down it, there was a uh is there was a fire like half the block burned down but jesus I personally think it was the landlord uh, right, set it on right. fire for insurance reasons. Right, that's right. what I think. Right. But there was a lot of electrical fires going on after Katrina. Just sure, you know, things are telephone poles knocked down and things like right. that. But uh, so yeah, I lost all my records and stuff. So I get to Phil's house. We're hanging out. I started burning like albums from him that I used to have you know, some old punk and hardcore and whatever. And uh, we just started thinking, like, we're sitting here right now. Why don't we do a band, like, a, a you know, a hardcore punk band? Right, right. And we just started writing stuff. And uh, we wanted to get Hank in on it, Shelton, you know, Hank 3. And um, we did, you know, we did an EP. And then we came and did, in 2007, we did a full, a full album. And you, yeah. and, and it's it's the the uh, EP. It's an eight song EP, and you recorded it in six days in Houston, Texas. No, we recorded that at at, at Phil's house. <laughs> yeah, well, he's got, a studio, he's got a studio, but we kind of recorded that on like it was like an eight track recording or something for the EP. I don't, I don't remember. Was it this house? Was it this house? I took this picture. That's uh, it, right there. That's it, right? It's me and him on the on the. Uh, on the porch of the house. Yes. Yep. Which, that's, that's which I said at the, which I said at the time when we went down there, New Orleans and bumped into you guys, like wandering around the, 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 the grounds. I'm like, I like, it's like, the, it's, it's like yeah. the fucking spawn ranch here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
There was a Manson vibe going on out there. Yeah, there was. There was a real Manson vibe going yeah. on there. Yeah, we yeah. Were, we were cultivating that, you know, trying to yeah. get it get it going. I think you achieved starting that, yeah. the cult. Yeah. But yeah, so we recorded that first EP like pretty, you know, just you know, not super produced, if you yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Then we, the the album we did, we uh we put a lot more time and, and thought into it, and like Phil wrote some really great riffs and. Uh, is that insecurity more, notoriety? Yes, insecurity yeah. notoriety. Yeah. And um, Hank played drums. We took his tracks and like mixed it all together, and uh, that's it. That's the album. We did we did a little touring with that band too, but n not any big cities. We all we just did smaller cities with that thing. Sounds like a fun project to do. It was really fun. You know, I wished I had been a little more healthy at the time and not yeah. drinking so much. But uh, yeah, that's life. Yeah, yeah. You know, it can't change that. But uh, yeah. And I wished we had, you know, done some more with it, like toured, like played in New York or L.A. or Chicago, that type of thing. But right, right. It kind of other projects came up. I hate God came up. Phil's projects came up. You know, so and he's got you know a thousand projects. So he's always got something new going on so we just moved on from there is is it safe to say that like when you're doing stuff like this when i hate god kind of reconvenes that it becomes like a that's sort of like that's a priority yeah it is it is for me and i know for him you know like down would be yeah. and now okay. i mean now he's got pantera so that's a whole right. different thing but doesn't down pull J down. doesn't down pull jimmy away from i hate god yeah, he, they do, but we always work it out, you know. Yeah, it yeah. always works out. Yeah. That, that makes, it's, hey, uh, by the way, one eight hundred Nausea loves you, Mike. Oh, love you. <laughs> I love you too. Um, correction, uh, outlaw order, uh, outlaw order. From 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 my perception, I know you you released the seven inch uh, legalized crime, uh, and and uh, dragging down the enforcer. It was it was outlaw order like basically like I hate God without Jimmy. Yeah, I mean it was the same people, and that just yeah. came out of us being. Uh, that's one of the times it didn't work out with Jimmy because I Jimmy see. was on tour. He was he was in corrosion of conformity at one right. point doing drums. He right. was in super joint, and uh, I guess down too at the same time. So he was taking time off to do that. So we were just bored and uh, me, Joey and Gary went up to the room to just write some like we were going to do like some punk stuff like D beat stuff probably. Right. And uh, and Brian Patton, our guitarist, he showed up as well and he kind of became part of it. And uh, it, it kind of changed the style. It was uh, it started sounding a little more. I hate God like, you know, with my vocals and the, Brian's yeah. guitar and. We we wanted it to be a little faster though, and like have leads because I think God doesn't have leads, you know? right? So right. you know we were we were trying to go for something a little different with that, you know. But uh, it's it's going to sound similar anyway, but for sure. And it seems like a a, a fair uh, a, a makes sense to ask here. Stardust Mofo is Outlaw Order ever coming back? I heard they were on hold. Yeah, it's been on hold for a while because of I hate God and you know every project we've done, but um. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe one day we, we will pick it back up. We yeah. certainly could, you know. Yeah. Uh, Joey passed away, our drummer, but, uh, you know, Aaron, our drummer for I Hate God, has mentioned that he would love to, to do some Outlaw Order stuff if we ever have the time, you know. It's all about did that. Time. Did that band play out? Yeah, we did a lot of local shows. We actually, uh, we never did an actual tour, though, in America we right. or Europe. We we got flown over to do Hellfest. Oh yeah, in France. Yeah, yeah. that's Which a good was, one. Yeah, it's a huge one. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we played Hellfest and then came right home. We didn't do any touring. You know, I think I Hate God was on tour that time because it was like a day when like I think everybody's band played. I think Down played and, and uh, they, everybody's <laughs> was there. You know, I think that was da like, Down I Hate God uh, Crowbar yeah. like everybody. Yeah. yeah. It's all it's all like just one right. big group, you know, group right, of right. friends and family. Yeah, yeah. Um, Corrections House, um, uh, is there is there ever going to be more Corrections House? That is probably dead forever. Yeah. 
um, that was me and Scott Kelly from Neurosis and um, this a guy named Sanford Parker and uh, Bruce Lamont, who were based out of Chicago. The band was basically based out of Chicago. And uh, Sanford does a lot of studio stuff. He has his own studio and uh, records a lot of Chicago bands. And, and he's done Voivod and stuff. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Scott kind of took a leave of absence. I got sick at one point right before my uh, liver surgery. So I had to step out of that and everything. But uh, And then later on, Scott was having some issues. And he's, I don't know if you've heard, like, you know, any stories about that. But he kind of, I haven't talked to him since 2018, possibly. Wow. He's kind of, like, left his friends. And he, he hasn't talked to anyone. And so it would, you know, if we ever did anything, me, uh, Sanford, and Bruce, it would be. So this is Scott. This is Scott Kelly. You're talking about? Yeah, from Neurosis. Yeah. No, so he's not playing music anymore. He he stopped playing music, and uh, he's had some really wild posts on Facebook. So, wow. I have not talked to the guy in so long. Like he just, I've texted him back in like 2019 or so, and he just won't write anyone back. He's it well, happens. It, ha it happens, right? Yeah, it happens, you know. Hey, sometimes, and I don't know if this is the case, but sometimes people need to do what they need to do in order to, you know, in order to see the sun rise again, man, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, peace be with him. You know, I don't know yeah. what he's done or what he's going through, but. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, I hope he figures it out is all I can say, you know. Yeah, yeah. I want everybody to be uh, happy, you know, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Stardust Mofo says, I'm not sure if Mike will see this. Well, he is now. I can but see. If you, but if you do, I Hate God has helped me through a lot of depression and mental health issues. Thank you so, so much, Mike. Hope to see you all one Thank day you. From, from Arizona. No, I really appreciate that. You know, I hear that a lot, you know, mm. with I Hate God specifically. Uh, yeah. I think people can relate to the sound of I Hate God and the themes of I Hate God, which is right. – you know, depression, mental illness, you know, you know, love and relationships and, and drugs and life and, you know, all these things. I think people can relate and it gives them some kind of uh, cathartic release, you know. So I hear that a lot, and I, but I really love it when people say that. I'm glad I can help someone. Music is, uh, music has an incredible healing element to it. It really it? does, man. It For me personally, the things I listen to and people that listen to my band you know it's yeah. pretty amazing music is like magic man it's like uh yeah it, it's like uh it, 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 it's yeah it's 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 magic it's hard to explain but yeah it, it just feels <laughs> that, that you yeah. know whatever's hurting you you know you'll yeah. whatever's ailing you yeah you know it gets it gets right in there yeah and this is this is valid uh laroche you guys need to understand your art helps out throughout the high and low times it does it and that's that's what it really does that's what art's all about man i i agree yeah um what is where did i find this well i guess this i guess this isn't that long ago um i just saw this this flyer and it just i guess this is 2018 uh me machine record exhorter soil right. green i hate god this isn't that long ago i thought this was what's no this is old this is like this is old this is like 89. Oh, I got confused. Something. Yeah. Right. Storyville Jazz Hall. I think that was our second show ever. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's really old. That's I think it's about 89 or so. Okay. Maybe 88. Not sure. But uh, All right. yeah, sure. opening for Exhorter, you know, people hated us that night. So <laughs> it was great. Yeah, you kind of you kind of stepped in that bear trap, opening up for Exhorter, right? Well, we did. We wanted to. We we purposely stepped in the trap. We knew that people were there to to thrash, you know. So yeah. we wanted to bum them out as much as we could. And what's this one from the RC Bridge Lounge? Is this an old one also? Yeah, that's old. Um, probably nineties, early nineties. Right. Maybe ninety one, something like that. Yeah. And then with David Koresh, yeah. did you do? Did you do a lot of these flyers? I know you did a lot of the graphics, right? I I, I did a, the artwork for the band early on, but uh, right. that I did not do that one. I've done a bunch of flyers, but not that one. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. The um, RC Bridge is where we uh, played with Gigi Allen. That was the same bar we opened for Gigi there. Wow, you, you, you actually played with Gigi Allen, huh? Yeah, yeah. How was that? It was wild, as you can expect. He actually, I talked to him. He was actually just a regular dude before the show. You know, he was, I handed him an I Eat God CD and he looked at it and handed it back <laughs> to me. Like he just had no use for it, these yeah. things, you know? I, I like, I appreciate when people hand me back my shit. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you know what I mean? Like, don't listen, if you're not going to give it a listen and you're not no, going to give it you don't have the time. It's cool, man. Give yeah. me it back. I'll give it to so and I, I don't I don't feel no way about it. You know, I, I try to ask people, yo, if I give you a shirt, are you gonna wear it? Sure. You know, yeah. I, you know, no, I agree. Yeah. It's like when band like going on tour and bands give me their shirt. Now uh, I used to just take it, but now I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm I'm probably not gonna wear it. Like just honestly, unless it's like a really cool yeah. shirt. I I don't know. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. I mean that's that uh, yeah, I, I I do the same thing. I, I mean, I can't store all this stuff, you know. Sorry, people, but you know, dude, too dude, much. I live in a studio apartment in Manhattan. Rent controlled studio apartment in Manhattan. Yeah. You know, right. so, you can't just keep collecting all these band shirts that you're not yeah. gonna wear. You already have your favorite shirts, you know. You know, I, I got I got a question regarding I hate God personally. Um, you guys were a four piece and then a five piece and now a four piece again. We were, yeah, it's been back and forth since the first album. Like, mm -hmm. um, we've always had different bass players, you know, right? For anything. But Gary's been with us since uh 2002, mm -hmm. he's still with us. So, we finally got a bass player we can think settle down, yeah, settle down with that. But, yeah, yeah Brian, our uh, second guitar player, he he joined in like '93, I think, and we did a few albums with him, five piece. He then, um, he needed to leave to take care of his family at the time. That was around 2000, shit, I don't remember, 2017, 18. He had to step down to, he had some uh, family issues he needed to take care of. And also he's got three kids now. So he doesn't have a lot of time for the band, but we do get him back. Because we, we do the whole Take Us Needed for Pain album at select shows if they pay us enough, basically. <laughs> so we, we get Brian back for that because he played on that album. So, right. Yeah, there he is over here looking suave. Yeah. On the left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, yeah. this I, 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 I have to shout out if I'm not, Dean Carr took this photo. Yeah, it's a Dean Carr photo. So shouting out Dean Carr, man. Yeah, Dean's a good friend of mine. Dean's a Is that right? Friend. Yeah, yeah, I know Dean really well. Yeah. We text and I've been to his house and drank with him. Yeah. He's sober yeah. right now, so good for him. I think he's, right I think he's doing well. Right on. Um, I want to, you know what, let's do a, let's do a question. And then I'm going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and take questions from around the world, all right? That's but, cool. But, but That's this, one's cool. Ca this one's catching my eye. Let, let's do this here. Um, hey, Mike, how's the voice feel holding up? I think you sound better than ever. Wondering how you feel about it. I agree with that. I think I sound better than ever as well. Like, uh, I, I don't know. It feels fine. Like, I've never really had any I've, – I've gotten hoarse – on a few tours, but probably because of the weather mainly, you know, but, uh, no, I mean, I was just, uh, I guess I was born to do this cause it's still fine. You know, do you do any, do you do any like warm ups or anything before you play? Uh, I used to smoke and drink a lot. That was my warm up, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you just get I'm out not, and rip. I still have like a glass of wine before the show, you know, so I'm not a hundred percent with this, right. but, um, uh, and I vape. I do the vape too. So like I don't know, but I don't do any kind of warm ups or anything. I just yeah. this is just me, you know. Do you do you vape? When you say you vape, do you vape tobacco or do you do you do you vape grass? I don't. I stopped smoking pot in like the late nineties. I'll yeah, occasionally yeah. smoke weed, you yeah, know, yeah. here and there. So that's or tobacco you vape. Yeah, it's the uh, you know the vape juice, the like the whatever it is. I don't know what it is. Nobody you, lo you love that shit. 
I do, man. That's, it's like I, it's like ex addicts, you know. It's like caffeine and nicotine are my yeah. new, you know. That's where it's at, you know. I, I I saw two documentaries about the vape thing, and they're like, "Yo, once you get started on this, forget it. You're yeah. fucking done." <laughs> it's like taking the place of harder stuff. So I'm yeah, gonna... people just yeah. But hey, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that said, let me take a quick. This will be quick. A couple of things, and then we'll come back. I'll take questions from around the world, all right? Cool, cool. All right. Hey, post your questions, will you? Now that's it. It's question time. So go go deep, get weird. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by blah, 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 and the Texas Silver Rush. They're a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in work with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces as well as the style them for stage, album covers, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famous, Greg Riley, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. Come on now, 126 Hardcore Clothing. They're, they're a clothing brand, a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They're about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. You must retain the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your weak-ass clothing game at www.126clothing.com. My friends, let's introduce our latest new sponsor, Mad Vintage. That's right. Welcome to the party, Mad Vintage. Mad Vintage buys, sells, and collects band shirts, primarily hardcore. The DIY operation was started and is operated by a hardcore kid, a a teenager, who just loves collecting and eventually got into vintage clothing, specifically the realm of vintage band shirts. They are always looking to buy out collections to either keep, sell, or trade new shirts added daily at www.mad with with two d's vintage.com and post it on instagram dig deep into that closet of crap and reach and reach out to them and make yourself some dough help me help you listen this is a this is a really cool sponsor we have here this is a a, a young person that has has a passion and started a little business and uh, he's doing very well for that uh, check them out. It's Mad Vintage on Instagram. Yo, check out what this kid is doing. A lot of cool stuff. Listen, we all have a bunch of vintage T-shirts and stuff from the old days back in the closet. If you're hard up for cash, you need a couple bucks, reach out to this kid. Uh, he knows what he's doing. Help me help you. So uh, that said, I uh, yes, new sponsor. Can you believe it? A new sponsor, you know? Um Um, that said, uh, I just want to mention real quick, a couple of shows coming up, uh, events in person events, Sunday, February 18th. That's two weeks from today. The big banger down at the Bowery electric free all ages, Sunday matinee with non-residents incendiary device. It's going to jump off tonight. The long wait featuring members, ex members of SSD Slapshot and wrecking crew, crazy Eddie and next scars. And yes, we ID are going out to play some West Coast shows, excuse me, with Channel 3. Sunday, March 9th, we are at the Kensington Club in San Diego. And Sunday, the next day, a matinee, Sunday, March 10th, we are at the Sardine in San Pedro. Yo, yo, all you West Coast motherfuckers, we're coming out West. We're playing some shows. Get out. Make it happen. Come on down to the show. We want to see you. Sunday, April 7th, I am moderating the From Punk to Monk Ray Capo book event at Generation Records. A week later, we are up at Bridge Nine Records uh, in Beverly, Mass. I'm doing the same thing. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Uh, Sunday, April 21st, uh, at the Bowery Electric Sunday All Ages Free Matinee with Fahrenheit 451. Kings Never Die, Brick by Brick. The Car Bomb Parade and Faded Line. And of course, our annual Tompkins Square Park Memorial Day show is happening this year on May 25th. 
with the mighty Rebelmatic, ID, Non-Residence, Cartel, and Scott Helen's Guitar Me of One. And we just announced Rampage Fest with Adrenaline OD headlining Sunday, June 2nd, 2nd free, all ages, seven bands, two stages. Get your ass down there. That said, questions, post them. Don't be shy. Go deep. Get weird. Let's bring our guests back on. Mike from I Hate God. Here we go. Hey, man. Hey. Hey, let's see what we got. Hey, ho. Hey, ho. Um, all right. This is our, our great friend and supporter, Marla Standing Owl, uh, in, yeah. in, 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 in Portland, uh, in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, I saw I Hate God with Randy Blythe singing once. Of the around 30 times I've seen I Hate God. I think all the recent Portland shows have been the best I've seen Mike sounds the best now, in my opinion. Cool. Thank you. Portland, yeah, Oregon. That, that's your kind of town, man. Portland's great. We love Portland always. Been playing there since the 90s. But uh, the Randy thing was uh it was when I was um when I was sick and I we had this tour booked with discharge. Wow. And uh, we didn't want to cancel it, you know, but uh, I couldn't do it. So we figured, wow. let's ask our friend Randy to do it. So Randy got the tour of Discharge and I didn't. But how many, day, how many How many shows? Uh, I think there was maybe seven or eight, maybe total. I don't, wow. I don't remember. That's, that's yeah. pretty cool. It's great. Discharge doesn't come to America a lot. so Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah, yeah, they always have problems with visas and shit. I'm really bummed I couldn't do that tour, but at least they they got to do it, and, you know. And 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 our buddy uh, JJ sings for them, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know all those guys now. We played with them in uh, God, I can't remember the fest, Bloodstock in the oh, UK, yeah. and uh, yeah. we played with Discharge, and I got to meet Bones, and the I think I yeah. sent you a picture of me and Bones. Yeah, but um, yeah, all those guys are really cool. Great, great. I was trying to find the comment, but somebody asked about the book, which you were which you were kind enough to send me. Yes. Uh, you know, is, is it and, and asked is it is there going to be another printing of it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like the that right there is like the fifth printing of that thing. It's been I've been doing it since uh, two thousand three, and I own all the rights to it since like you know. 2002 or something like that i'm not 2002 2012 or something so mm -hmm. it's uh yeah i'm i'm gonna print it again i still have copies of it i just don't i haven't set up like an online thing for it just because i'm always on tour you know it's like i can't run the online thing when i'm out on tour but uh i'm gonna reprint that one and i'm also doing a new one i'm just really uh, i'm talking to this uh publishing company and uh i think i'm gonna sign a deal with them so Hopefully we I can get that out and done. I, I wanted to ask you about about this and and you know re reading through it. You know you know I, I I gave it a read. You know here in New York we have alternate side of the street parking, right? Like right. I gotta you gotta yeah. go out and sit in the fucking car, you know, to do the whole. So on a rainy uh, morning, I, I sat in turbo focused and read the whole thing, right? Yeah, of course, like, it's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, super 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 turbo focused, but. Uh, you're just incredibly proficient with your lyrics. I mean, you always, all, are you always writing lyrics? Is this something you're always doing? Uh, pretty much. I mean, every few days, you know, I'll, I don't sit down and then purposely write. I'll just, when right. something comes to me, I'll write it down. And sometimes it'll be more than just one sentence. It'll be a whole five, six paragraphs of stuff, you know. I try to keep at it as much as I can, you know. And I saw that you kind of you 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 sort of conjure up these lyrics and sort of all, always like have them standing by. And when I hate God or when another one of the bands kind of you know yeah. with, that that it's you sort of you kind of go into your archives and try. Is that how you do it? That's how I did it for like Arson Anthem and uh, Corrections yeah. House, but also new record new uh, new lyrics were written in the studio for those bands as well. So I use right. some of the older ones new ones in the studio yeah i guess i guess it's i guess it's like i don't write i don't write lyrics that much like i have to have like 
you know, but but you know, the bands that the band I'm in or the bands I've been haven't yeah. been as as busy and proficient as you. But like for me, it's different. It's like you gotta like kind of hold a gun to my head, and then and then right. I and then I then I'll get it done. You know. I know what you mean. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. You know, sometimes it's hard yeah. to to get to, but. I mean, I guess I wanted to be a writer, you know, back when I was a teenager. I, yeah, so right. I wanted to put out books yeah. as well as being a band, you know, so they go together for me. Hey, I want to thank hey Jared, Jared Spencer with the with the uh uh the super chat. Thank you, brother. Shout out to Mike, love your shit. Traveled from NL, would that be the Netherlands? I think to, so, yeah. To BC? NL to BC. Uh, I'm not sure. Is that is that British Columbia, what what is NL to BC to see you guys with Guar, but oh. Then, but oh, but ended up bumming around until you got into Canada with Clutch. Okay, huh. yeah, wild show. You guys have been sounding tight. Well, thank you. Well, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, okay, let's let's uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland. Uh, okay, I, I that went through my head, but I was like, yeah. Thought that would be like an F. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about opening for Lamb of God on the Headbangers boat? Would Randy perform with "I Hate God" again with Mike as well? Of course. No, no. <laughs> crazy question. That's crazy. No, he only did that tour because I was sick. You know, I was like in the hospital then. It was before my surgery, so. Right. No, he. I've been knowing Randy since he was a, a kid coming to see us wow. in Richmond, Virginia. He would show up and uh, we have an instrumental song called God Song. It's on the first record. We used to let him get up and just improvise lyrics to it. But wow. It back in like 94, 95. That's we awesome. We were hanging out with Buzz Oven and touring with Buzz Oven, you know, and he was a friend. Randy was friends with uh, the Buzz Oven guys as well up in sure. Richmond. Yeah, so no, he's not going to be singing with us again. I mean, unless he wants to come out and do like a chorus yeah. or something, you know, that's fine. Makes sense. Um, this is a good one. I got to ask this one. True or false? During the 1996 Pantera White Zombie Tour, I Hate God fed themselves by stealing Rod Zombie's catering. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. He was, he traveled in a separate bus as the rest of the band. You know, we hung out with Shauna. We hung out with all Jay Younger and all those guys. And, uh, right. you know, right. so they were all really cool to us. And um, Rob had a separate bus, you know, so he would leave. As soon as they played, him and his girlfriend would leave. Sherry, right. or her name is. Uh, right, right. So they would leave and he would leave all this catering in his room. So, of course, we're going to go ravage it you know of course man of, just of course. scavenge that stuff you know yeah yeah i meant to ask you about this too because th this tour with this was uh, i remember this tour with pantera th this was coming off this was coming off uh, uh of dope sick right in 96 you did that tour yeah yeah it, yeah, it that, was. that, that it must was. have been a, that must have been a, a like a nice moment huh it was great touring with pantera it was amazing you know like huge shows you know and yeah. we're just this little band from new orleans you know but uh yeah, it was amazing, man. It was, you know, people still talk about that tour. Yeah. Somebody will come to see us headlining now and they're like, I'm, I saw you in that tour, you know? So yeah. it was great exposure. And Phil's always worn our t shirt, you know? So yeah. it's yeah. He, he's all good stuff, you know? He's always waved the I hate God flag hard, man. Yeah, he yeah. has. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Peace Coyote says, on 10 years of abuse, there are recordings from KXLU I love listening to. The DJ on those recordings mentions a show at the Hong Kong in LA. It's yes. gone now. Curious if you remember anything about that. I do. Um, well, that recording session was insane. We were all drunk as hell, so it sounds crazy. But uh, um, that Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Cafe which is a, you know, a, a lot of old LA punk bands and hardcore bands played there back in the, the, the late seventies and eighties. But, uh, yeah, I think we played with this band mind rot there who were mm. a, a up and coming band at the time. So yeah, it was a fun show. It's a small club. It was great though. Right on. Uh, why Roach says, I just literally found cancer as a social activity for $8 at Powell's books in wow. Portland. 
so stoked. Awesome. Wow. Good. That's cheap, man. I yeah. don't I don't let people go for that. Charge uh, Rick Russ says there's a Hong Kong cafe in every city, <laughs> right? Um there's one in Boston. There's a Hong Kong, what is it, kitchen? In Boston? I think so, yeah. Right. Um or something. Who's Oh, here's a good one. TV Bleak. Greetings from the UK. I Hate God were one of the bands that really resonated with us guys in Northern England. Old industrial town, yeah. down on their luck. There was something very real about the uh, I Hate God. Philip, and, and, and I have to throw in, I think that's a, that's a kind of a common, not a common, but I think that could be said for old upstate New York places sure. and Ohio, right? Totally, man. Cleveland and uh, yeah. places like Syracuse and Buffalo and yeah. Albany and all those places too. But I love to hear that. And I hear that often too, that like you were talking about earlier, the environment, you know, like yeah. right. coming from that environment, you can feel the, the you know, like it, it's just relatable to some people. And I love that, you know. It reminds me of uh, if you like Black Sabbath talking about from where they came from, right? Which was right. like, it, 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 you know, or, or even... Even Judas Priest talking about they came, I think Judas Priest from Sheffield, right? I, 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 I somewhere I, around there, yeah. Yeah, which was like these sort of metal industrial towns and, and heavy, heavy bands, yeah. you know. Well, right. Discharge is from you know Stoke on Trent, which is what near Birmingham, I think, or that's fucking. That's so that whole area is Napalm Death. Fault. Napalm Death's from somewhere in that area, so oh. it's like you know breeds all these heavy bands, you know. Thanks for reminding me, Larry Kelly, because I, I, I totally, it totally slipped my mind. Uh, ever been arrested in a graveyard? <laughs> <laughs> I knew this would come up. I figured it would come up. Uh, yeah, I happened to get arrested in uh, 1982 with uh, some band called the Misfits. Uh, I've never heard of them, but uh, no, yeah, I got arrested with, uh, with Robo and Glenn and Jerry. I think Doyle was there as well, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, we got got arrested. Was in, this in, was this down in New Orleans? Yeah, this is in uh, one of the one of the above ground cemeteries we have. And what you guys you guys jumped the fence and well, like you know, the first time the Misfits played there, we first of all we went to Houston to see them. We drove down there, them and the Necros saw them. Right, right, you know, right. and we actually followed them back to New Orleans. You know, so we became friends. Right. And all Glenn could talk about was he couldn't wait to see the above ground cemeteries. He wanted to collect bones from the cemetery in New Orleans. You know, so we were like, sure, man, we, we can bring you there. You know, like after the show, we'll all go. The problem was 90% of the crowd like knew about this and followed us. And there was like this huge like convoy that showed up at the cemetery. It was like, it's called St. Louis. We were looking for St. Louis number one, I think that's got wow. Maria Laveau's tomb. Sure. But we ended up at the at a St. Louis number two, which is on the other side. <laughs> it's right next to the projects. Ooh. So. They pull up in their Spider-Man van, the red van with Spider-Man on the side, parked there, and everybody's pulling up. A friend of mine named Fish pulls up on his motorcycle that's loud as fuck. So someone called the cops. We were all spread out walking through the tombs, and you know, they're the misfits are loving how crazy the above ground. They're above were they, ground. Were, were they still wearing makeup from the show? They, I think they had maybe wiped some of it off, but it was still right. basically there, you know. They were still wow. wearing their stage clothes. Wow. Still, you know, the devil locks coming down, and they hadn't, like, pinned them back or anything. But uh, they're above ground here because of the flooding, you know. Yes, of course. We're below of sea course. level. Yeah, yeah, so, of course. Yeah, and um, yeah, everything was fine until, like, three or four cop cars show up and line us up and – I was a, a juvenile at the time. Um, there's an article. It's on my Instagram page. There's an article that talks about uh, two 16-year-olds wearing uh, T-shirts depicting skeletons. That was me and uh, my friend, uh, I think Troy or Mike. 
Well, I was wearing a Necro shirt, and he was wow. wearing a Bad Brain shirt. Oh, that, that'll go over big when you get arrested in a graveyard, yeah. right? Yeah. Luckily, I was underage, so they just, like, let us go. But the Misfits had to pay bail. And uh, they were you know, the moral the of the story is if you're going to go do something like that, you, yeah. need to be, you need to be kind of discreet. Well, that was the thing. We had no idea all these people were going to follow us, you know, and they, yeah. they did. And it became like a party in this terrible neighborhood next to the projects in a cemetery at two in the morning or something, you know. So it didn't work out the way we thought. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, good. Larry Kelly reminded me. He's like, you know, because I, I, I know that this guy's going back a while. He's like, you know, he was with those guys when they got arrested. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah, I told uh, him and Steven that, that story when uh, when we played Irving Plaza that time. I was telling that's, him that's that. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tobias, what's up, man? Been a while. I hope you're well. Hey, Mike, I was just uh, wondering how your friendship with Chaos UK GABA was forged. I know you guys go back a long way, but don't know the origin. Curious, Tobias. We, we toured with them in, like, I think, 94 and um, in the UK and well, in, in no, that was in America. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. That was in America. These things blur together. So right. the SUK came over and we, they were on at the time they had put out an album on Century Media. Right. So they hooked us up with them. We toured almost the entire United States with that. And um, look at my hair in that picture. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like 80s metal or something. Yeah, but, um, it looks like you're the singer for White Snake or something. It does. It really does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I became friends with those guys. You know, uh, Chaos, the singer, Gabba, um, Marvin, who was also in the Verukers. Uh, you know, I still keep in touch with those guys to this day. Yeah. We just saw Gabba recently, so he came out to. He always comes out to see us still, and we love those guys and still right. friends to this day. Cool. Um, let's see what else. Interesting. Uh, hey, hey, let, let, yeah, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to start. No, I'm not going to go there. Uh oh, I was waiting for somebody to, to call me something or. No, Alex is asking, what are your political views? Oh. No, we, don't, we don't talk about political views on this show. We don't really care. We, this, this show it's about music. We don't really get into right. politics here. A couple of just just so if you're watching the show for the first time, we don't really get into politics. We don't really get into the the vac stuff, and we don't get into who you're fucking. So it's right. not we're, we're a music based show. Sure, you know? yeah. So that, yeah, so, that's a whole another show. You know, that's, that's, that's we want to do politics. That's a whole. That's a tune into another show. Let's just say I uh, I wish everyone had the rights they deserve. That's all I'll say. You know. Yeah. People should be equal. Nifty Dimensions. Mike, please excuse this next question, but I'm a dirty motherfucker. Any stories from when you played with Gigi, ketchup, et cetera, thrown off the stage? Ketchup? Ketchup. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, no, he, um, he just did his show. And uh, at one point, though, I got up to do like, I was, it was a song I really liked that they did. And uh, it was with the Murder Junkies, you know. Mm. And, uh, Merle pushed me, and uh, the next thing I know, Gigi was hitting me with a cymbal. Oh, uh, I mean, hi hat! It was a hi hat stand, so like it split my jaw open, and I got pushed off the stage. But uh, a couple of my friends jumped up on stage and like started fist fighting with Gigi, and like pretty much beat his ass. So it was I a mean, great show. It was I mean, a fun show. Like, <laughs> he's one of those guys that when he's on stage, he just becomes this sort of like yeah. Yeah, yeah, even though I talked to him earlier, he was just focused on, you know, yeah. silence. So Harry was, Kelly says, never mind Gigi. What about Seth? <laughs> oh, we toured with Seth. We toured with Anal Cunt. Uh, <laughs> and I knew Seth from way before the tour. Um, Seth was another one. He was super cool and nice guy, you know, and then he, he got on stage and he was just ready to destroy stuff, you know. <laughs> That's he was uh, in all that. He got into some pretty crazy lyrics later on, but that was like he was trying to piss people off, but it came across really badly in some of those later records. But yeah, like that's when I, you know, I don't agree with that stuff. But um, 
Seth was, he was a friend of ours. You know, we, we did a split with them. We did uh, two black Sabbath covers on a split seven inch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, still keep in touch with Tim from that band. Speaking of which, um, uh, Nifty Dimension as well. I'm glad you're enjoying the interview. Uh, uh, Tell us about, you sent this to me, this DEA record. Uh, this yeah. DEA seven inch, uh, you know, really interesting. Uh, who's on it? It's on Southern Lord. Wh who's on it? What's the origin of this? This is just uh, a project me and some friends did. That's uh, I, I was friends with Slayer Hippie Stephen Hanford from Poison Idea, and um, he was a good friend of mine, and um, he rest in peace now, you know, but um. We were talking at a show in, in Portland and uh, he, we said, let's do a record and write some songs. And so they did. It's, uh, Nick Oliveri's on that record. Uh, Blaine from the accused sings one of the songs. Mm. There's a guy named Tony Avila on that album, on that seven inch. So it was just like four songs, all different singers. I sing one song and um, it was just fun to do some project to do, you know, just, uh, Mark Lanigan actually wrote the, the wow. liner notes on that thing. The blurb on the, microphone. I like the I like the color of this other one you sent me. This is. Oh, the sheer terror. I hate God split. Yeah. 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 I like, I like, hold on. I want to. What color was that vinyl green? Yeah. 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 I this... picked that one out for you. There's a red. That... and So I picked, I thought you'd like the green one. This is a sheer terror. Uh, excuse me. I hate God. Sheer terror. Uh, split seven inch. Yes. Right. Yeah, Tell yeah. us about how did, how did you get involved with with uh, Reverend Paul Bearer and uh, how that turned how that how that come to be? Going on tour with them, you know. We um, I've been a fan of that. Just can't hate enough since it came out. You know, like <laughs> back in what was it eighty five, eighty six or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um. I love that album to this day. And I always loved that band. I thought they were just amazing. And Paul's, you know, he is the band, you know? So we ended up finally, after me begging a friend of mine who knows them and booked them, uh, who books, I hate God. Mm -hmm. And we got, we did a tour with, with sheer Tara. I think we did more than one tour with them. It's hard to remember, but uh, just got to be friends with those guys and decided to do, that was probably supposed to come out before the tour as like a, a special seven inch for the shows, but you know, the way things work it ended up coming out after the tour, but tell me about it. Yeah. yeah. It's a Devo cover and, and sheer Terra does a Depeche mode cover. And so, Paul, Paul kills it, man. He always does, man. He's, he's, yeah. he sings and it's great. We were talking about Joe Coffee earlier as well. Yeah. Which I love his that other, band. His other band, Joe Coffee. Here's yeah. a shot of I is, is I hate God at Hellfest, Hellfest, right? Oh yeah, I think is, so. is that is are there are there any places <laughs> that that like you know through all the years of touring like when you see that on the itinerary you're like oh yeah I can't like this they oh, love us there I can't wait to get back there. It's a, it's a great festival. I, I believe we we've played there maybe five or six times now. We've done that festival since like 2009 wow. or so. Yeah, I love that. I love that fest. It's and every band plays it like every year. There's like yeah. I mean, we've played there's been Molly Crew, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, they all play as well as like bands like us. That's one that's one of the great joys of uh going to Europe and playing those festivals. At least at least, you know, I still find it really. I mean, I don't, I don't do it yeah. much, but when I used to go out with Biohazard and stuff like that, it's like Oh wow, we're on this festival with you know Kiss, David yeah. Bowie, and Fun Loving Criminals, and <laughs> and, and Emperor, and Emperor, right. like it's woo! such an eclectic mix of yeah. bands, you know. And there's some huge yeah. bands in there, you know. Yeah, it's awesome. That, that, that's they do that's, a really good job of organizing that stuff. Yeah, let me let me feel this one from Steph. Drew. Are you coming to Albany for the Biohazard show next month? Yes, I will be there. Um, I'll be up in Albany for the show. I am doing the biohazard doc. We did screen the trailer for it at the, uh, extreme music awards up there a couple weeks ago, but my intention is to come up there for that. I have some business that I need to, uh, take care of with them while, while I'm in there. It's my chance to 
deal with them face to face to face, you know? So, so that's happening. Um, let's see. Uh, Larry Kelly says, Mike, uh, wrote the liner notes for our lost groinoids record. Thank you for that. Yes, I did. Yeah. Why is it lost? Uh, Larry, why is it lost at this point? It's not to, you know, like give it to it's Mark. Found now. Yeah. It's what? It's found now. It was <laughs> lost, apparently. <laughs> Where the fuck is that recorded? <laughs> yeah. I don't know uh, how it got lost, but here's a good one. Paulie Pork Chops Vids. Any unsung heroes band from the New Orleans era when you were coming up that 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 you thought was gonna be, you know, like these guys are you know that never made it big. In right. Uh, the Red Rockers were one of the great bands of New Orleans, but they're, as they uh, evolved their next album, they turned into like a U2 sounding like pop band. They Red, were. Like, oh, 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 is, that the Red, is that the Red Rockers who got um, uh, the, 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 drummer, the, dr the drummer, the drummer Jim from uh, Sick Little Fingers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I used to see Jim Riley all the time and they I would go my band Teenage Waste opened for Red Rockers a few times. Wow. And we thought they did like a clash type of thing, you know. Yes, then of they course. Went, of they course. went to LA and came right. back like influenced by Black Flag also in, right. in the hardcore scene. So they were like a heavier clash. You know, it was amazing. They were so good, man. And then their next album they went pop and they had a they had a hit on MTV, but yeah. all of us kids were just like, uh, you know, sorry. It, that happens, right? And deal with yeah. They went for the the money, the big time, but but they there's other have, bands that have not nobody's heard from New Orleans. Was, the sluts I mentioned earlier, the normals mm -hmm. never really did a lot. Um, a band called uh, Shell Shock, the band Pairs? That, Pairs, is that a is that the the Pairs are a younger band. Yeah, okay. they're a bunch of younger kids. I'm not really too familiar with that scene, but I've heard Pairs, and they are a good, yeah. like, hardcore kind of, uh, I, I don't know what you would call them, but. Pat Baldwin, said, Pat Baldwin says the first Red Rockers album was great. It was great, and they just re-released it, remastered it, so you can hear the bass and the guitars on it more. The first release, you couldn't hear the guitars. It was Kind of sad, but uh, yeah, yeah. They just Ray Hogan says, "Yet Cowboy Mouth made it." <laughs> True, that's the singer for Red Rockers. Next, oh, band. is that yeah. right? Yeah, Cowboy Mouth. They they ah. got they're pretty popular, I guess, down south, but maybe other places. They're a whole different style. One eight hundred nausea asks, "Was there ever any material released by Mike's pre I Hate God bands?" No, nothing official. There's like. Some rehearsal stuff from uh, Suffocation by Filth. And there's a Crawl Space live show somewhere on the internet and YouTube. But uh, Teenage Waste, like I said, too, they we recorded our practices but never got in the studio. Yeah. It seemed not important at the time. Like, oh, we'll be doing it. We'll get in the studio later. And then the band's over and you're like, fuck. It was hard Maybe back before. then. It was hard back then when yeah. you were teenagers. It wasn't that easy. It's like getting into a recording studio. Was like, who had money for that? You no. know. And now there's Pro Tools and yeah. GarageBand. You can make a record in your room. You know, it's no big deal. But back then, it was it was tough. And and it sucks those bands aren't recorded. But you know, it's the breaks. Speaking of hardcore, did you see who I have coming on the show on Wednesday? I did, man. I did. I we also we drove to Texas once to see them the night Minor before. They, Minor the night before they played New Orleans, so I got to see wow. them twice. And wow. I, hung, I hung out with Ian for a while back then. He was really cool. He was really nice. He had mentioned me coming up to the Discord house. I was a runaway at the time, and I told him that, and he like he was sympathetic to that. So it was, he's a good guy. He was all. He was always a good guy. Um, I'm mm -hmm. happy he's coming on the show, and that's a band I saw many times, and they were always great. Oh, fantastic, man! They were great. the two times I saw them were just incredible. Just there were there were bands that were like they were always great. The early Bad Brains were great, sure. and, and, and personally, I know a lot of people would disagree. But I mean, we played with them. I always thought the Misfits were great back then. I enjoyed the Misfits back then. We love the Misfits down in New Orleans. Like yeah. you know, there was other scenes that hated them. You know, they thought yeah. they yeah. the makeup turned them off. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were heavy and they were fast, and they yep. 
they were they were great lives, man. There was a yeah. lot of stage diving going on back then at Misfit shows. It was yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah, they were they were despised by many, and and it, it's, yeah. it's it's yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because we we've talked about this a couple of times on the show. Is is people look back and seem to think like they were some huge band back then, and yeah. you know, anytime, not anytime, but a couple of times they went and saw them, the place was barely half full. You know, exactly. it's like, yeah, you know, they, they were not, it, it was almost like after they broke up and after Metallica did, oh, man. did yeah. and, and Guns N' Roses, then it became this sort of, you know, this it blows my mind. It yeah. blows my mind that they play yeah. like Madison Square Garden. That's just, yeah. Yeah. I never would have thought that, man. I know, right? They played New Orleans the first time, maybe a hundred people, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw them here at Great Gildersleeves. Uh, you know, and, and like, it was ha half full. Sure, yeah. You know, they we were just played, yeah. punk, man. Yeah. 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 Um, is Mike ever going to do another industrial project like Corrections House? I would like to do something in that vein, you know, something different, like with the two remaining guys from Corrections House, uh, Sanford and Bruce, or with other people, too. I mean, I've also, I've done some like noise projects with uh, spoken word type things. I've done a few shows like that, you know, Yeah. but nothing cohesive, you know, it wasn't, it was just noise and screaming and then spoken word. Type <laughs> things, you know? Right. But uh, yeah, I, I would love to, I'd love to do that in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would love to hear more from the guilt of. Yeah. That's another, I don't even know if I told you about that. Um, no, we, that was not on my radar screen. That was another, a band I did with this guy, Ryan McKern. And we just, um, it was more like industrial, noisy, some of it almost black metal sounding a little bit. Sure. I'm sure. not the hugest black metal fan, you know, yeah. but I like a couple old bands. But uh, it, yeah, it was kind of uh, like that stuff. But we record, we put out like eight releases, like on cassette and mm. 10 inch record and all these things. And then we kind of just stopped doing it. Like, you know. Ama amazing the amount of, of releases and bands, you know? Oh yeah. And yeah. then you just get tired of it and you're like, uh, move on to the next thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. What's, what's the next, next challenge. Right. So, all right. Hey, uh, thank you uh, so much for coming on the show. Thank um, you. And, and and thank you so much for being a supporter of the show, man. I really oh, man, yeah. That. I've been listening to the show and watching the show since uh, I don't know. It's been a probably a couple years now, you know, yeah. maybe maybe two or three years. But you you know what? You fucking sent. You know, I forgot. I didn't download. You sent me uh, flyers and shit of. Uh, wait, how how did I miss that? You sent me uh, oh, yeah. from the upcoming tour and stuff, right? I uh, sent yeah for the tour the uh, that headbangers boat thing with Lamb of God. I got it. I'm I'm and, downloading. Uh, I'm sending it to myself right now. A show oh. in Finland with Godflesh and Discharge. That's another one. I sent you some pictures too, but we can do that next time I'm on the show. I didn't see those. Um, let me let's let me put this stuff up real quick. Let's talk about it. Uh, hold on, hold on. Here. Answer this while I'm while I'm doing this. Okay. How, how, how did Mike end up doing the German song of Brutal Truth on their Need to Control album? Just being friends with Kevin and uh, Danny, and they they knew I loved the Germs, so they asked me to do the that verse on the song. Actually, I think me and Alicia just visited them in the studio, and they just happened to be doing that part. So that song. So Kevin was like, you want to sing this verse? I know you love the germs. I was like, sure. It's way faster than the original, but it's still great. It's... Yeah, you think? Brutal yeah. Truth, right? Right, of course. Yeah, and Dan, you... Kevin, great people. Love all those guys. Okay, I got I got, uh, I got, got this. Is, is the Headbangers boat thing first? No, the tour is first in May. Okay, I got it. I got it's it. a European tour. Um, I got it right here. Hold on. It's like a couple weeks or so. Heading out in a couple weeks to do. No, the no, we're, it 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 is a couple weeks. Oh, we're it not, is a couple it's weeks. Not till uh, May. Got it. We're taking some time off right now because uh, we. There it is. Off Boom. Last. 
Yeah, it's pretty dark. It's hard to see, but let's see where you're going. So uh, European dates. Paris, Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Milan, Lisbon, Berlin, the uh, Poland. Yeah, yeah. The usual. And when you do this, I guess, as we know, you can't take any days off because the day off in between means you're just spending money to just hang out. So you That's got you got it. Yeah. Yeah. I've always said that the days off, you're spending money, not making it. So yeah. And you don't you don't want to relax too much because you 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 know you got to keep in keep in shape and play. So no UK dates. We're, oh, that's another thing. We're doing a UK tour in December, I believe, with Voivod. Ooh, we're working on that right now. There's no confirmed dates yet, but wow, December all UK dates with Voivod. That's it's not why even announced. So I'm like, uh, you know, a little just letting it slip, but uh. Yeah. That's why there's no that's why there's no UK dates on that. Yes. Yeah. We'll be doing and that. Are these is this this that's is this, a is this this isn't this is Randy's thing, right? Yeah, I think they organized it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is Randy's thing. It's uh, kind of like I guess like the um I went on that motorhead cruise when they did that. So I guess it's similar to that. Just you live on the boat for a couple days and all these bands play. I think we're doing two or three sets or something crazy. I don't even really, re but yeah. A uh, chimera at the gates, corrosion, napalm yeah. exit. Oh, our pals are on this. Soulfly fly exodus. Yes. Bleeding through. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people I know and a lot of bands. These, like, these so. things, these, these, I've never been on one of these boat things, but they must be a lot of fun. The Motorhead cruise was great, man. It was uh, just drinking for three days and watching. <laughs> you get to watch Motorhead like three times too. It was great. I've, I've the last couple of times that I saw Motorhead, I would, I, I would just sit behind Mickey D and just be in oh, awe of him. Just be in awe of that guy the whole time. He's you know? an amazing drummer, man. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, and, Lemmy was getting a little ill around that boat cruise, so right, he was getting. You could tell he was weak, but it was still good shows. They still played great. Where is wait? There's one more I got here that you sent me. Oh wait, no. What was the last one you sent me? Uh, I sent you three show flyers. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, the uh, the Finland festival. I don't, I don't even know. Oh, here it is with God Flesh. I got it. Yeah, Discharge Godflesh. Yeah, I got it. Hold on. I don't know the name of that fest, actually. but uh, It is the Sonic Rights Festival 2024, okay. the third edition oh. of, of the third and, and best edition yet of the Sonic Rights Festival. Godflesh Discharge, I Hate God. Yeah. Yeah. Dope Lords. Where's this? Where's this happening? Uh, Helsinki, Finland. Oh, yeah. Always a good time in Helsinki, man. Oh, uh, we just played there. We we did two nights. We always do two nights in Helsinki. Is that one of the places? Like I asked you, is that one of the places that just fucking loves I Hate God? And you're like, you know, they love us there. Yeah, it's yeah. great. I got a lot of friends over there, and they bring us back like every year. It seems like we've played over there at least every year, other year. You know, it's. Great city, uh, too. Helsinki's great. One in Andrew Jones is Collops. I don't know how you pronounce that. Collops is a sick band. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I've never heard them. Yeah. Let's check them out. Like you said, not that you watch any opening bands, but, you know. Sometimes I'll watch. If there's like It's hard, man. It's, it's hard. hard. It's but really people, hard. People don't understand that. And when, right. when, when you're in a band and you're playing a show, and I'll just speak for myself here. Sure. Yo, I gotta be. I'm trying to focus on getting on stage and fucking yes. un, and unleashing on stage. Right, exactly. I'm not. I'm not really at liberty to like casually watch another band play before that. I'm trying to get ready to go upstairs to go on stage and yep. and, and potentially hurt myself. Sure. You know? And you've been in the van all day driving, yeah. so yeah. you get there, you just want to chill, like be by yourself and. I might catch a band here and there, but usually I'm 
hiding somewhere. I don't know. Oh, don't is that right there? Collapse? Oh, Same guys from Collapse? Okay. Oh, Collapse. Yeah. Okay. Good shit. There you go. Well, all right. Anybody anybody uh, you want to thank or shout out on the way out? Everybody for watching the show, you know, and everybody who loves the band and any band I've done, you know, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And catch us on tour. And uh, hopefully we're recording before long. I, I hate, I don't like saying that because <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It happened, but hopefully we'll record soon. But yeah, thanks to you, of course. Yeah. Thanks to Larry and Steven and everybody. It's been great, man. I'm glad to have been here. It's it's awesome. You're going to come back soon. And thank you so much for your support uh, on the show, I'm man. A fan, man. I'm a fan of the show. It was a great show today. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. And and if I don't talk to you, have a good time out there. Be safe and just do what you love doing, brother. Yeah, you too, man. Keep in touch for sure. I will. I will. I'll talk Thank to you soon. Buddy. Yeah. Okay. Bye -bye. Take care. Well, there you go. Another one in the books. Uh, what a great guest. Uh, Mike was fantastic. Um, Mike kicks ass, man. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Camille. Um, Stefan, everybody. We had a nice, healthy audience today. Uh, a lot of good interaction. I appreciate that. Uh, this is what it's all about. That's why, you know, a, a show like this is just good. Sh good show today, team. You know, uh, uh, Stardust Mofo, come back soon, okay? And hey, listen, once again, coming up this Wednesday, uh, a big one. This one, this is a big one in my book. This is a guy that you know, I've known for a long time, uh, huge influence on, 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 you know, me musically and, and just on what I do, uh, took a couple years to run this guy down, uh, this Wednesday, uh, this is going to be, a, this is going to be a great one. So, uh, hope to see you all here, uh, on, yeah, just everybody, everybody to, yeah, everybody tune into this one on Wednesday. This is the big one. So. Marla, tune in when you can, you know? Uh, so, you know, there you go. Yes, welcome to all the new viewers today. Thank you. If you can support the show, we appreciate it. There's a Patreon page. You know, it's uh, uh, patreon.com, Drew Stone. Please support the show. What can I say? Um, let's, let's call. Yeah, I can't wait for Wednesday either, man. Yeah, I should start with the clip saying Ian would never be on the show. You know? Yes, he was in minor threat. Listen, Ian is on the on the 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 um the Mount Rushmore of American hardcore. Ian is Ian is arguably, you know, the top 3. He's in the top 3. I mean, yeah, looking forward to it. Um Yeah, give the video a thumbs up. Thank you. I know, I know I know I should be asking uh to do this but please give it a thumbs up give it a like do what you need to do to keep things to keep things going listen HR we've talked about HR HR really HR is dealing with his issues you know I don't think that having HR on as a guest is the best is the best for HR and we love HR so you know uh, Joe Frank, another killer episode. Schedule has kept me from seeing them live. Stoked for Wednesday. Listen, you think you're stoked, Joe Frank? You're not half as stoked as me, you know? Yeah, we love HR, but, you know? So so there you go. Um, yeah, Godfather status for sure. Absolutely. Any other? Listen, do you, do you see? Do you see the massive amount of, of listen, I didn't even announce this yet. Everybody asked for years. John Connolly, Nuclear Salt. There it is. Bob Japardi, Phil from Cop Shoot Cotton Swans, Mike Score. Yo, this is a good one. If you know conservative military image band that's blowing up right now, we got Adam coming on the show. You know, there's just so many shows to do. It's going down. So, um, Drew, quick question. That old footage you filmed outside the Biohazard Onyx Clutch show years ago, will any of that be in the new shit you're doing with them? No, it won't because we can't find that stuff. 
Um, that is from the uh, sh that was from uh, when we did the Biohazard Shades of Grey video. Also that day, we did the Biohazard on uh, Onyx Bionic Slam video that day at the Academy. Unfortunately, I don't know where that stuff is. I didn't keep it. I it couldn't have been thrown out. Somebody's got it, but um, I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to get the guys from Biohazard to look in their personal collections, but I haven't seen any of that stuff. That that's the holy grail. The other whole the other holy grail is the outtakes from the Biohazard Punishment video. Like I don't know what happened to that stuff. Uh, oh, you were outside. Yeah, that was you know kind of an epic show. The CBGB show is going to be great. Absolutely. Um, couldn't think of a better way to spend three hours on a Sunday. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I love what I'm doing. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to do it. Uh, till next time, which is going to be this Wednesday with the big banger, Ian Mackay. Do good things and good things will come to you.